Tonight's game is brought to you by Coors and Coors Light. The beers with a difference worth tasting. Coors to you, Bulldogs. And by Toyota and your Central Valley Toyota dealers. Toyota value and Toyota reliability. Who could ask for anything more? And by your Coca-Cola bottler, who brings you the smooth, refreshing taste of Coke. Catch the wave. Coke. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Walden along with Don Perkins. The outcome of tonight's game, Utah State versus Fresno State, really is of only secondary importance here tonight because this sellout crowd, well in excess of 30,000, have gathered together here at Bulldog Stadium just for one reason, to see if Kevin Sweeney becomes the NCAA's all-time passing leader. Mike, injuries are a part of any football season and any football team. The Bulldogs have had their share. Kevin Sweeney's had more than his share. We're talking about 173 yards tonight. He needs, uh, he's only been averaging for the past six games, 145 yards per game. In one game against Pacific, he only threw the ball 14 times. Health has been a problem for him. We'll see early in the contest what it is for tonight. And for another perspective, we go to our sideline reporter, Vic Jacobs. Mike and Don, there's danger lurking around that 173 yards. I call it the magic number mesmerization. The Bulldogs must snap out of the Sweeney Flutie spell and execute, keeping their entire game plan in perspective, or else the Utah State Aggies could rise up and burst the historic Bulldog bubble tonight. Mike and Don. What are Kevin Sweeney's thoughts with all of the Sweeney Flutie hype? You'll hear from the senior Fresno State quarterback when we return. Well, come on over, baby. Real November dealing going on. Toyota dealers want to make this the November to remember for great deals. You're going to remember this first big sales event of the new model year. Lots of 87s in stock. They want to deal on the all-new Camrys, exciting new FX-16s, and Tercels. Don't forget, it's the last year sales tax is deductible. Your last chance to save hundreds more dollars. Make this your November to remember. Uh, who could ask for anything more? See your Toyota dealer now. <laughs> Hi. This is an MMX headroom pop quiz. Blindfold, please. Huh. Quicker next time. In the blind taste test, which pop drink did more people prefer? The new taste of Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi! Wrong. Mm, I love trick questions. Coke. Coke! Coke. The new taste of Coke. It's true. You heard it here first. C catch the wave! Coke. See the incredible Coke KBOS video van tomorrow from noon to 2 at Hanoyans at Cedar and Butler. There'll be a special price on all your favorite Coke products. Catch the wave. Coke. The game is about to begin. If Kevin Sweeney gets the record, what will it mean to him? He shared his thoughts with us just a short while ago. If the record happens, what does it mean to Kevin Sweeney? Uh, it means that I've played a lot of football games and had an opportunity to throw a lot of passes, and I think it's uh, an endurance record because of the fact that I haven't, I haven't had to miss a game since I've been here at Fresno State, and hopefully more than anything, it will mean a lot to me that we accomplish something together with my teammates here at Fresno State. And if you get so close but do not get it, then what? I think it would be uh, kind of a tragedy, and we came so far, and there was so much hype on it, and to get it done, and a, a lot of people have done a lot of things in promoting it, so I think it'd be tragedy if we didn't get it, but then again, you know, there's been some great times that we can all look back on anyway. And Kevin Sweeney is hoping the greatest time in his young 23-year life will be in just a couple of hours from now. I always thought that time was a measure of quality. Now they've got technology that can cut the time of aging beer to that. Bam! Instant beer. Not Coors. Coors ages their beer longer than any other major brewer. Almost twice as long. To age any beer longer, it gets smoother. More easy drink. More like Coors. Nope. Coors won't take shortcuts with time. Ah. Uh, Coors is the one. Look, if you dream of a career, a job doing what you want to do, there are a lot of schools out there willing to take your time and your dreams. But of all those schools, only one placed over 96% of its last graduating class in jobs of their choice. My school, Healed Four Seas College. You know, 
there's a big difference between dreaming and working. We'd like to make the difference in your life. The choice is yours. As the leader in multi-user technology, MicroAge brings you the leading multi-user systems, like this Alto system, allowing your staff to share information and resources. At MicroAge, we understand the technology of today's multi-user systems, and we understand business needs. So we can explain exactly what this technology can do for you and your office. When you're looking for a business system, come to MicroAge. We offer more than computers. We provide solutions. Doug Flutie was a young man with a great deal of class at Boston College, still is, now with the Chicago Bears. Flutie sent the following telegram to Kevin Sweeney prior to this game tonight. Good luck in pursuit of the record. You deserve to break it. Just don't shatter it. From Doug Flutie, formerly of Boston College. And there is Kevin Sweeney's dad, Jim. Rumors are flying around that Jim may be in line for the California job. Jim Sweeney has won 69 games in his nine years here at Fresno State. The Bulldogs have won the toss. They will receive Utah State will kick off. Utah State with a 3-7 and seven record, 3-3 three and three in the PCAA Conference, the Pacific Coast Athletic Association. Fresno State 8-2, 5-1 and, two, five and one in the PCAA. And back deep for Fresno State will be Gene Taylor and Brock Smith. Kelly Skipper generally is back there, but Kelly Skipper was injured last week in Honolulu against the University of Hawaii and is not in uniform. Dean Garner kicks off, and it'll be fielded by Brock Smith at the 2. Smith up to the 20. He's got an opening. Smith up to the 40, and is stopped at the 40-yard line. A return of 38 yards by the sprinter out of St. Louis, Brock Smith, the junior. And the Bulldogs will have a first down from the 40. And Don Perkins, would you think that Doug Sweeney will try to go with a long bomb on the first play from scrimmage? I tell you what, Mike, I think we're going to see a passing attack that we have not anticipated nor seen all year long. The question is, how badly bruised, how badly injured is Kevin Sweeney? He took another lick over in Hawaii last week. He's had injury problems the last six games. Yep, there it is. He's going to go long. To Gene Taylor, the ball is up there. Taylor can't get it to, at the 20-yard line of Utah State. That would have been a 40-yard pass play. Chad Troxclair and Tony Brown were the defenders for Utah State. As you look at the starting uh, backfield and the wide receivers for Fresno State, James Williams in there in place of Kelly Skipper. The front line, Mike Withicum, Mike Chulensa, Brad Heyer, Brian Kazarian, and Mike Savage. Second down and 10 for the Bulldogs of Fresno State from their 40. Kevin will put it up again if he can. He's got time, dumps it off across the middle to the tight end fluke. It is intercepted by Utah State. Wade Harmon, the linebacker, comes up with that tipped ball. So two plays from scrimmage, one intercepted, and Utah State will take over with the first down at the 47 of Fresno State. Not a long pass here, Mike. Just a little one right over the middle there. A nice soft touch on it, trying to hit number 17, Flug, the tight end. He's only caught 13 for the year, so maybe he's not used to being thrown to that much. Wade Harmon intercepts it. And Tom Ponich will be the quarterback for Utah State. He's thrown seven Mike. touchdowns, but he's had 16 intercepted this season. Ponich, a senior from Billings, Montana, started out at the University of Montana. He will try to throw, but he can't do it. Down he goes. David Grayson, the outside linebacker of the Bulldogs, came in there and nailed him and sacked him back at the 47 of Utah State. In the Aggie backfield, Demetrius Brown and Sutton Hanslick will be the running backs. Kendall Smith, he is an excellent receiver, along with Pat Newman and Petey Maiden. Petey Maiden, the tight end for Utah State. <laughs> The problem with Ponich, a lot of interceptions, and he has been sacked a lot. That last sack by Grayson was the 37th time Ponich has been drilled for a loss. Demetrius Brown gets up near midfield, very close to the 50. Cliff Hanneman, the rover back on the Fresno State defensive unit, made the tackle. Aggies don't have much of a running attack. As a matter of fact, there's about three Bulldogs that have more running yardage than any of the backs for the Aggies. 
Good point, Don Perkins, because Utah State has rushed for the entire season only 675 yards, and uh, James Williams, the tailback of Fresno State, has 821 yards. Offense has been a problem for Utah State. Ponich will put it up. He's going for Troy Turner and overthrows him. Turner was streaking down at about the 15-yard line, and he was covered by Michael Stewart. So Ponich and Sweeney in a duel here in the early going in the first minute and a half from Bulldog Stadium in Fresno. Aggies got the ball in good field position, weren't able to do anything with it. Now they're going to have to kick it away. Herrick Mandel, the number one punter in the PCAA conference, will kick to Stephen Baker. Baker standing at his 12. Good punt by Mandel. Baker Keep gets the ball at the 12. Trying to get some running room. There's a great block. Baker around the left side gets another block and a penalty marker goes down and so does Baker. Baker dropped at the nine yard line by John Moore. And when you see a receiver take the ball where he did and then run laterally the opposite side of the field you always suspect a clip. And you're going to see the block there. This was not a clip. Number 84 is Chris Dugan coming in there making that block. There's Baker going around the wide side. There is a flag. We can't see who it is, but Baker is hauled down there at about the 10. The man in the white hat is the referee, Larry Rice, of Sunnyvale, California. The others in that uh, refereeing crew, the umpire is Joe Kozak. Let's listen to Larry first. Clipping on a return. First down. The linesman is Bill Athen. The field judge is Bob Wusatich. The back judge, Rich Colon, and the line judge, Jack Wood. Fresno State now will have a first down at the Bulldog three-yard line. Baker, Taylor are the wide receivers. Kevin Sweeney from his end zone dumps it off. Here comes Mosley, the fullback, and he is oh, leveled hard at the five-yard line. Oh, did he take a crack. Al Smith, the inside linebacker of the Aggies, averaging 15 tackles per game, really belted Mosley. Well, they lost last week to the Utah, but he had 25 tackles. Watch Mosley coming out of the backfield there. You see number 56, the linebacker, Al Smith, coming into the picture right there after he bounced off of number 34, Tony Brown hitting first. Al Smith did the cleanup. No score. We have played two and a half minutes. Brock Smith, Gene Taylor, and uh, Stephen Baker are the wide receivers. The ball is at the five. Again, from deep in the end zone, across the middle, and a grab is made at the 21-yard line. The catch by Stephen Baker. He's only five feet, nine inches tall, weighs only 172, but blessed with great hands. And look what he has done. When he catches the ball, he catches it for a lot of yards. The tackle on Baker made by the free safety, Darren Long. They will spot the ball at the 20-yard line, so credit Kevin Sweeney with 15 yards through the air. First and 10 now for Fresno State. Taylor, the receiver to the right side, Baker to the left. Brock Smith is in the slot, now coming in motion. Kevin given a lot of time, now he's going to have to run. In hot pursuit comes Mark Moraz and out of bounds. Escorting him out of bounds, the right cornerback, Andre Davis. Glad to see that kind of a move, Mike, that time by Kevin Sweeney, because normally he turns up field trying to pick up as much yardage as he can. That time he saw Davis closing in on him, retreated a little, but actually thought he wouldn't have to take that hit. And that's the thing he needs to do, because taking those hits has really hurt him in the second half of this season. Chuck Shelton, formerly the head coach at Drake. Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa, and they abandoned football, so he got the Utah State job. Second and nine, Fresno State from the 21. The pass is caught. Ron Jenkins making the grab. Jenkins is a junior from the Los Angeles area, went to Manual Arts High School. He was out of bounds at around the 29. Let's see where the officials mark it. They will mark it down right near the 30. So it's not quite, yes it is, it's going to be a first down, just barely. First down, Fresno State. Sweeney now is hit on three of five, 26 yards. He needs 147 more, and he'll be the nation's number one collegiate passer. 
Williams moving out to give us to Mosley up the middle. Anthony Mosley put down at the 40. Anthony Mosley, a senior from Selma, California, getting a great block from the left guard, Mike Chudelansa. And Mosley motored through up to the 40, a gain of 10 yards. Coach Jim Sweeney refers to him as probably his best all-around back. Nice blocking there by the offensive line. I don't know who to give the credit for the tackle. Darren Long was in there. Actually, he uh, Mosley was tripping over one of the red shirts there trying to block for him. The preliminary indication was the first down, but they called on the chain gang for a measurement. Looks like it might be an inch short. It is. So make it second down and an inch to go. The ball near the 40-yard line. Yeah, what a great passing situation. This one you can just let back and air it out because you've only got a little bit to go for that first down yardage. We have played a little over three minutes of this first quarter. This is Mike Walden along with Don Perkins. And we welcome all of you around the country watching tonight on ESPN. Stephen Baker and Gene Taylor will be the wide receivers for Fresno State. And another slot back would be Ron Jenkins. Ball is near the 40. There goes Smith in motion. Quickie to Baker, and he's got it up to the 46. Tackle made immediately by the linebacker, Al Smith of Utah State. And that'll be a first down and six more yards credited to Kevin Sweeney. We haven't seen much of that all year. Just a short drop, a quick throw right out there to Stephen Baker, Al Smith, a big linebacker. He does a good job against the run, also can cover back, as we just saw on Baker. And now Kevin Sweeney needs 141 in his pursuit of Doug Flutie's record. Just a little over 11 minutes remaining in this first quarter. The pass high, but grabbed by Brock Smith at the 48 of Utah State. A pickup of six more yards. Pondre Davis and Al Smith collaborating on the tackle for the Aggies. So Kevin Sweeney started out by throwing a 40-yard pass. Now he's going to be content to throw the little five, six-yarder. Loosen them up there. Uh, once you loosen them up long enough, then you'll be able to go deep on them. It's second down four, Fresno State, the ball at the 48 of Utah State. Sweeney's going to have to dump it off in a hurry, and he does to Williams. Williams fights his way to the 46 of Utah State, a pickup of just two. Mark Moraz, the 255-pound senior from Glendora, California, playing for Utah State, put Williams down near the 45. There you see what Williams has done, running the ball from the line of scrimmage. That time he was used as a secondary back coming out of the backfield. But Kevin Sweeney was able to find him out there as a safety bell. Brock Smith to the right, Gene Taylor to the left. Mosley Williams in the backfield. The pitch goes to James Williams. Slips one tackle. Williams has got the first down and then is run out of bounds by Pondre Davis. Big number 74, Gary Halsey, almost had Williams for a loss. But James Williams' speed was able to get away from Halsey, and it was Davis who got Williams out of bounds. It'll be a first down for Fresno State. The ball at the 37 of Utah State. And James Williams running like the Jim Williams that was running early in the season when he had all that great yardage. He's been kind of in the doghouse lately. He's fumbled a few times, and Coach Jim Sweeney doesn't take kindly to that. There's Kevin Sweeney dumping it off to Williams. And Williams gets a hard hit from Tim Kendall. The ball will be placed down near the 32-yard line. We're going to see an awful lot of James Williams tonight. He's been alternating a lot with Kelly Skipper, number 26, but Kelly took quite a shot out there in Hawaii in that loss to the Rainbows, and uh, he won't be in action tonight. I understand he has a slight concussion. The wideouts are Stephen Baker and Gene Taylor for Kevin Sweeney. Sweeney across the middle. Loses the ball, and the Aggies come up with it. Utah State, Al Smith makes the recovery for the Aggies. So, so far, Fresno State has been self-destructing. There was the tipped ball off the hands of Paul Flug, intercepted, and now Flug loses the ball when he appeared to be inside the five at least. 9-12 left.
left in the first quarter. We have no score from Bulldog Stadium, Fresno, California. Today's game is brought to you in part by Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. You gotta stop pestering me, son. I'm not what you're after. I'm a crowing chicken. Rooster, that is. You gotta go to Kentucky Fried Chicken if you want great, I say great tasting chicken. No one cooks it tender like the Colonel. Well, just one taste of that finger licking good chicken and you'll never go anywhere else. There ain't no substitute for honest to goodness Kentucky Fried Chicken. I say Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. Get set for big laughs, Monday night at 6. So remember, a cookie in the hand turns to blubber on your can. <laughs> Give me a break. And at 6.30... Uh, this is an important government matter, Mrs. Rush. Can I have a few words with you in private? That's the men's room. It's okay. There'll be nobody in there but us. Never been in a men's room before. <laughs> Give me a break. And too close for comfort, beginning Monday night at 6 on TV 26. People are keeping track of Kevin Sweeney's stats. He's 8 out of 10. This one complete to Paul Flug, and then Flug loses it as he is hit and stripped of the ball by Clad uh, uh, Troxclair. Flug's kind of had a case of butterfingers tonight. He lost the handle on that one after catching it. He dropped one earlier that he should have caught that came up with an interception. Utah State with a first down from the Aggie 11. Tom Ponich, the quarterback. Nothing there for Sutton Hanslick. Stopped first by David Grayson, but great pursuit by the red-shirted Fresno State team. Let's take a look at him there from the line of scrimmage. You're going to see a big number 90 come in there. Number 67 on the end of the screen is Jethro Franklin. Number 90's in there, 45 over the pile, David Grayson. This is a team that you can't run against very well. You only average about 100 yards per game, and Utah State doesn't run the ball very well. Two receivers to the right side, one to the left, that's Troy Turner. Ponich looking to his right, across the middle, and a hit is put on the receiver, Kendall Smith, by Anthony Nunn. Nunn, an inside linebacker for Fresno State. Kendall Smith, an outstanding receiver. Great hands. He's the number one weapon for the Aggies. You already see the quarterback, Ponich, there, catching him right over the middle. But Jethro Franklin, a great linebacker for the Bulldogs, is right there to stop him for a short game. A pickup of six on the pass play for Utah State. Third and four. The ball at the 17 of the Aggies. No score. Eight minutes left in the first quarter. Hans Lincoln Brown of the running backs for Tom Ponich. Ponich in trouble. He will be sacked for the second time tonight. Jeff Drove Franklin, who leads Fresno State, he now has 19 and a half quarterback sacks, and the Fresno State defense just recorded their 66th sack. See number 77, that's Cliff Hanneman also in there, but Jethro Franklin is the guy that really brought him down. 66 sacks for the year, 43 in all of last year. Eric Mandel to kick. The snapper is Navy Tuiasa Sopo. They're kicking away from Stephen Baker. The ball hits at the 48 and flips out of bounds at the 48-yard line of Fresno State. A punt of 38 yards by Herrick Mandel. And the Bulldogs and Kevin Sweeney will take over near midfield. No score, 7-10 left in the first quarter. Sweeney is 8 out of 10 for 68 yards. Now needs 105 to break Doug Flutie's NCAA career passing record. Sweeney's going to go long and deep to Baker. Can Baker catch up with it? Baker bumps into Pondre Davis and goes down. Baker was
was looking over his shoulder and steamrolled right into Pondre Davis. Well, we're hearing a lot of booing here in Bulldog Stadium. Let's take a look at it again. Let's see whose fault it was. Pondre Davis is right there. Looks like Stephen Baker really ran into him trying to catch up with the ball. That was overthrown anyway. It cannot be pass interference, either offensive or defensive, if neither has a chance to catch it. So we come back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second down and ten now at the 48 of Fresno State. Still no score. Sweeney pumps once. Comes up and will run out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Running him out of bounds was Jim Bossiello. A 253-pound senior defensive tackle. Let's take a look at it again from the end zone. You see Sweeney there looking to his left. Can't find a receiver. And once he starts scrambling to the right, it's hard to pick up anyone. But looking at it earlier, there was nobody open. Ah, those kind of shots can take their toll before the night's over. Third and nine at the 49. Brock Smith in the slot to the right. the mishap on the snap. Sweeney gets rid of it to Jenkins at the 40. Jenkins fumbles the ball and it's recovered by James Jackson of Utah State. And again, Fresno State self-destructing here in the first quarter. That is one interception and two fumble recoveries by Utah State. Well, we're seeing a lot of case of butterfingers by the Bulldogs tonight. The only good thing that's coming out of this is Kevin Sweeney is picking up yardage because the passes are complete. And then they're fumbling. Do you suppose the fumbles are caused by the buildup over the pursuit of the record by Kevin Sweeney? Everybody wanting to excel and do well for their four-year veteran? And everybody wants the record for Kevin. So Utah State will take over now with the ball at the Aggie 26. Pony's in trouble. Slips away from Grayson, and then he can't complete the pass. The pass was thrown in front of Demetrius Brown coming out of the backfield. Grayson came within a whisker of sacking Tom Ponich. There's Ponich rolling out. Grayson there missed a chance to really be a hero. Ponich there throwing it out to Demetrius Brown, but a little bit behind him. Number 80 is John O'Leary in hot pursuit of Brown. Second and 10 for the Aggies from the 26. He will run out of the eye with Demetrius Brown in the eye. down and Brown is at the 50 40 is caught from behind and dropped at the 25 of Fresno State but remember there was a penalty marker dropped back here and the preliminary indication is a motion penalty against Utah State and I think it's that man if we can see it again we did not see all of it but Demetrius Brown the tailback who took that run there was the one that was leaning he was moving forward before the snap of the ball and a nice run negated by that lean. Yes, it was indeed a nice run of 49 yards, all for naught. The line of scrimmage was the 26. Here is Larry Rice, the referee. Illegal motion on the offense. Still second down. But now the ball will be moved back to the 21, so it'll be second and 15 for Utah State. The Aggies have averaged only 67 yards rushing per game, only 123 yards passing a game. And when you only have a total offense of 190 yards per game, you don't win many. One of the reasons for Utah State's 3-7 and seven record. Ponich puts it up for Kendall Smith. Off the hands of Smith. Two defenders, Greg Williamson and also Rod Webster, but Smith almost sandwiched in between the two and made the grab. And Michael Stewart was the gun that really put pressure right there on the right of your screen. Number five is a strong safety. He moved up there and blitzed on that when Ponish saw him coming, but he had to hurry. Troy Turner comes in for Utah State. Wide receivers to the right side would be Pat Newman and Kendall Smith. Turner is to the left. Hanslick is the fullback. Demetrius Brown, the tailback. The 
fullback and the quarterback bump, and yet Ponich is able to pick up about five yards. I think that Ponich was supposed to hand that ball off to Hanslick, but Hanslick didn't get the message. He almost know. blocked Ponich right out of the way. Mike, I don't know if something weird's happening down there, but there's a lot of people jumping at the line of scrimmage prior to the snap of the ball. Take a look at it again. Let's see if we can see the movement there. We see Jethro Franklin, number 67, moving. He was able to get back, though, before the ball was snapped. Here is the punt now by Herrick Mandel. What a great punt. Fielded on one hop by Baker. And Baker is dropped at the 12. And a penalty marker goes down. It could be face mask. Bill Stewart made the tackle. A 59-yard punt by Herrick Mandel. And remember, he had a 77-yard punt earlier this season. Mandel is an interesting study in that he was the punter at the beginning of the season. About four games into the year, he went into a slump, was benched, inserted back into the punting chores a couple of games ago, and he has been outstanding. 59 yards on that last one. Capacity here at Bulldog Stadium is 30,000, and the Bulldogs generally have four or 5,000 over capacity for every game. With some folks seated on the grassy area called the berm area over at the side. On a return, illegal use of the hands, first down. That penalty against Fresno State and a timeout called by the officials, so we have 5.40 left in the first quarter. Still no score. Right now, Kirkwood's design gallery is featuring Heckman desks at special savings. It's got to be around here somewhere. What a mess. These are supposed to be alphabetized. Oh, no. I invite you to come by and view these beautiful yet very functional desks. Where is my savings account statement? Help! Here it is! All right, I have enough for a really nice desk. But where should I go? Kirkwood's Design Gallery, Theater Clinton, a valid tradition for 85 years. Well, come on over, baby. Real November dealing going on. It's your Toyota dealer's first big sales event of the 87 model year. And because he's loaded with inventory, it'll be a November to remember. You're gonna remember dealer incentives on selected trucks that could save you money and extra value packages. Save up to $753. Most of all, you're going to remember the truck bucks you saved. For great truck deals, make this your November to remember. Uh, who could ask for anything more? See your Toyota dealer now. <laughs> Remember, immediately following tonight's telecast, a representative from the Central Valley Toyota dealers will present this season's Outstanding Inspirational Player Award. This award will donate $3,000 in the name of the player to the Fresno State General Scholarship Fund. Once again, we welcome all of you watching tonight on ESPN and Prime Ticket in the Southern California, Arizona, and Hawaii areas. No score, 540 left in the first quarter. Kevin Sweeney is 9 out of 12, 93 yards, needs 80 to surpass Doug Flutie. There's the shovel pass, and Mosley is twisted down by Mike Moraz. We'll take a look at it again, a little shovel pass there. Sweeney drops back like he's gonna throw downfield. Mosley coming underneath there. Mike Moraz, though, doing a good job there for the Aggies. Stayed at home and took care of business. Someone's down on the field with an injury. One of the officials down, it's not the referee. Larry Rice is the man in the white hat. I don't know whether a player ran into him or he suddenly became ill or what. He just went down and the trainers are working over him now. We have 524 left in the first quarter. And now the Fresno State team, there's Ed Ferreira, one of the trainers for Fresno State, along with Paul Schechter. We have 524 left in the first quarter, no score. Who's gonna be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Blue two Coors Light Draft. Coming up. You know, you got a great thing going here, big guy. But I think it's about time we get a bouncer. Bouncer? Why do we need a bouncer? Well, the handsome, big, masculine, rowdy type was trying to take advantage of my naive and delicate nature. Who's doing that, Fran? Well, nobody yet. <laughs> 
But you never know. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Why you bother me, boy? Are you crazy? I'm a chicken hawk and you're a chicken. Are you coming quietly or do I have to mush you up? You're going at it all wrong, son. You gotta go to Kentucky Fried Chicken if you wanna catch America's favorite chicken. It's a great place to get a great meal. No one makes tender, juicy chicken like the Colonel. It's finger licking good. Here, son, let me give you a lift. <laughs> we do chicken right. The official is on his feet, Paul Schechter. And one of the security men down on the side escorting him off the field. Vic Jacobs, do you have an update for us? Yeah, the referee just got stuck by one of the players. He was knocked out for a period of time, but he's okay now as he's walking back with Paul Schechter. But he was knocked out for a while from a hit from one of the players. Back to you guys in the booth. Well, it is not the referee. The referee is Larry Rice. And let's see if we can make out which official it was. I think it's Bob Wusatich, the field judge. Looks like Bob over there on the sidelines. Anyway, we're back to action now. Ball is at the eight-yard line. It's second and nine. Sweeney wants to throw if he can. Dumps it off gingerly. And Mosley is able to get only to the six-yard line. Brian Hunsaker and Jim Fossiello. The two defensive stalwarts on the left side of the Utah State line making the tackle on Mosley. Well, that almost looked like the shovel pass that we saw earlier, although it was not a shovel pass. It was a desperation move on Sweeney's part to get out of trouble. If Kevin Sweeney had his druthers, and of course he doesn't, but if he did, I'm sure he'd like to get the record on at least a 50-yard bomb to either Baker or Taylor. They have been potent weapons for Kevin and Fresno State the last couple of years. Oh, look out! The hit is made by Chad Troxclair, the strong safety on a blitz. And Kevin Sweeney, bells must be ringing in his head as he walks toward the sideline. What a hit by Troxclair. Well, they talk about blindsiding often, but this is the ultimate of a blindside. Right there, Troxclair. Sweeney doesn't even see him because he's looking to his left, almost a safety. And now Barry Belli with that right foot of his hugging the end line will try to punt out of trouble. Making the snap is Chris Dugan. Belli roots it out of there. And it's fumbled around at the 36-yard line. And finally, Tracy Porter covers it for Utah State. Did someone butter the ball before the start of the game tonight? <laughs> It'll get better. It's got to get better. Everybody's mishandled the ball all over. Let's take a look at it again. A short kick there. Number nine, Kendall Smith. Great receiver. Couldn't get on it. Number 16 there is Troy Troy Porter recovering it for the Aggies. But now the Aggies have a first down at the Fresno State 35. Just under four minutes left in the first quarter. Mike Walden, Don Perkins with you from Bulldog Stadium, Fresno, California. Kendall Smith wide to the left side. Demetrius Brown stopped at the line of scrimmage. If anything, he might have lost a yard. John O'Leary was the first man to make contact. O'Leary, a junior linebacker from Oakland, California, said to be the best junior college linebacker in California last year when he was at Santa Rosa Junior College. And there we see the mascot. It's scarfing feeding up time. A, scarfing up a little grocery. Second and no, about 10. Utah State will run out of the eye. Demetrius Brown again. And Demetrius Brown is nailed by Greg Ramsey. Ramsey is a senior defensive end from Colinga, California. Jim Sweeney says he's the best in the conference. You're going to see him right there, number 87. Greg Ramsey coming in, 6'4", 252, senior. They're going to miss him next year. And you can see why Utah State has averaged only 67 yards rushing per game. But, of course, they're up against an outstanding defense in Fresno State. Boy, it's a tough number, though, when you get the ball on the opponent's 40-yard line and you can't do anything with it. You You're go really backwards. in bad shape offensively. Right. They got it to the 35. Now they're back to the 38. Third and 13 now for Utah State. Tom 
Ponich, the senior from Billings, Montana, wants to throw if he can. Overthrows Kendall Smith. Even had Smith been able to hold on, he would have been out of bounds. Greg Williamson with him step by step. Williamson in good shape on the coverage after that one. He got burned several times last week in the Hawaii game. So he's making up for that tonight. He's sticking right with the receivers. We'll get a punt now by Mandel. I'm surprised that they don't have Dean Garner to try a field goal. He's kicked one 59 yards. Rod Webster was back there, but he watches the ball flip back into the end zone for the touchback. Were you a little surprised they didn't go for a field goal? Yeah, what can they lose? You can't really lose anything at that point. Surely your kicker is going to get it into the end zone, but the Bulldogs will get the ball at the 20. That's probably the best field position they've had most of the night because they've been starting out inside the 10. Two and a half minutes, 2.23 to be exact, left in this first quarter. No score. The Bulldogs have had a couple of drives. However, an intercepted pass and two fumbles have thwarted them here in the first period. Stephen Baker to the right, Gene Taylor to the left. From the Fresno State 20. Williams struggles for a yard. Gary Halsey wraps up Williams. Vic Jacobs, do you have an update? Just spoke with Al Smith, the great linebacker for Utah State, and he told me that they're not concerned with Sweeney's record. All they want is the game. Back to the action. Second down and nine, the ball at the 21. Taylor, wide right, Baker to the left. Sweeney in trouble. And is flipped down by Mike Moraz, the defensive end. Moraz just reached out with that right hand and cut him down. I was going to say the pass protection has been holding up for Kevin Sweeney pretty good all night. And just when I thought that, it's broken down. The Utah State Aggies, though, are a big defensive ball club and big offensively, too. So they can wear you down in the course of a long evening. Both quarterbacks have felt the brunt of defensive pressure. Ponich has been sacked twice. Kevin Sweeney has been sacked twice. Sweeney has now been sacked 46 times this year. All last season, only 23. Kevin goes down. It's Mark Moraz again. Moraz is six feet four, 255, from Glendora, California. He's had 17 tackles for losses this season. And he leads, by the way, the PCAA last year anyway with 16 sacks. Mark Moraz. His job was made a little bit easier that time because Kevin Sweeney lost his footing a little bit, and they knew the Bulldogs had to try to pass. Barry Belli to punt. Kendall Smith is deep. Penalty markers are dropped. The ball takes a Fresno State hop and is down at the 43 of Utah State. A 47-yard punt by Barry Belli. But let's see about all of the yellow penalty markers. We have 17 seconds left in this first quarter. Neither team has been able to score. Illegal procedure against Fresno State, so they'll call it back. Last year, Utah State led Fresno 7-3 at the half over in Logan, Utah. And then the Bulldogs got rolling in the second half and went on from there to a 38-19 victory. This has been kind of a strange opening first quarter. It looks like neither team offensively wants to do it. Illegal procedure the on the offense. Penalties declined. First down. I'm surprised the penalty being declined, too. Once again, great field position, though, there on your own, what, 44-yard uh, line. 17 seconds left in the first quarter. It's been scoreless thus far. And the Aggies will go out of the eye. Tailback Demetrius Brown. It's Brown to the 45. A gain of two. Tackle made by Mark Olson with help from John O'Leary. Clock is running. I doubt if they'll be able to get off another play before the end of this quarter. That's it. First quarter is history here in Fresno. The Bulldogs nothing and the Aggies of Utah State nothing as Kevin Sweeney continues his pursuit of Doug Flutie and the NCAA 
Dear Mr. Davila, I watch my spending closely during the holidays, and my Vaughn's tape total is full of great savings. Just wanted to say thanks, Sue Clark. Thank you, Sue, for the nice letter. You're right. At Vaughn's, you get everyday low prices on groceries and great weekly specials. And you don't pay more for USDA choice beef and restaurant quality seafood. For warehouse prices, no sacrifices, come to Vaughn's. Happy holidays. State has won 11 straight games here at Bulldog Stadium and uh, FSU is unbeaten at home in the last two years a 13-0-1-1 record first quarter stats look at Utah State one yard rushing five yards back six total yards to 98 for Fresno State but they don't have any turnovers and the score is 0-0 is at the 45 it's second and eight utah state first play of the second quarter brown is punched to the ground greg ramsey from colinga putting him down well mike none of the backs on the utah state aggie team averages as much as three yards a carry and after that run by brown and the tackle by ramsey i can see why ball is at the 45 Brown has carried five times for two yards. That's hardly worth getting out of bed for. Pat Newman, a freshman, wide to the right side, Utah State. Kendall Smith to the left. Ponich is looking in his direction, goes to him. No good. Michael Stewart on pass coverage for Fresno State. take a look at Troy Turner. He's a junior, 6'1", 193, good speed, but not enough speed to get away from Michael Stewart, who has position on him all the way. Had it been close, he would have been out of bounds anyway. Eric Mandel to punt. Navy Tui Asasopo to make the snap. Baker is deep. Another fine punt by Mandel. It's picked up by Baker at the 19, out of bounds at the 21. Rather dangerous pickup over there on the short hop by Stephen Baker. But he's been known to handle some risky ones. He ra rarely uh, signals for a fair catch, and he'll take anything that's bouncing around. Second all-time in Fresno State punt returner with a 12.3 average. A 36-yard punt by Mandel, a two-yard return. And Jim Sweeney's team, a 0-0 deadlock here early in the second quarter with Utah State. Ball is at the 21 of the Bulldogs. Might have been Mark Moraz jumping too soon. The defensive end on the right side for Utah State. We'll see. Well, we'll take a look at it again. We know Moraz, number 72, at the top of your screen right there was moving, but uh, I'm not sure if one of the red shirts moved earlier. The walk-off, though, is going to be against the Bulldogs, so evidently someone... Illegal procedure on the offense. Get the first down. Someone drew him off. First and 15 now for Fresno State at the 16. Mosley Williams out of the I formation. Play action fake. Going deep is Sweeney for Baker. Almost had a fingertip grab at the 27. That had to be a 55-yard toss by Kevin Sweeney, who now needs just 80 yards, and he almost had it in that one throw. Well, I tell you what, nothing's wrong with his arm and his ability to go long. There he is, drops back, good pass protection, trying to hit the home run to Stephen Baker, the mm. touchdown maker, not quite off his fingertips. Darren Long, though, covering for the Aggies. Because of the bruised right shoulder of Kevin Sweeney, he can throw overhand and deep better than he can dump off the little four or five yard pass to one of the backs coming out. Timeout has been called by Fresno State. 14 minutes left in the second quarter and still no score. Fever, your
your key to the cars and trucks that are driving people wild. It's your last chance to take advantage of tax deductions and save hundreds, maybe thousands, on a new Ford. Save over $700 on an 87 Ford Escort, the best-selling car in the world. Or save over $1,000 on a hot tempo with front-wheel drive and room for five. Ford Fever, your key to hot deals. Turn on Fever now. There's a new dimension in family hair care with Saturdays, formerly Fantastic Sam's. Saturdays looks great from every angle, every day of the week. You don't need an appointment for the high-quality, affordable service we know you want in family hair care. Our skilled professionals will give you great perms, cuts, style. And now there's a sunny new look and feel at Saturdays, a special spirit. Saturdays Family Hair Care, a family favorite every day of the week. Get the Saturdays spirit at these former Fantastic Sam's locations. One of the cliches that baseball often uses, it's a game of inches that can also be applied to football on that last bomb by Sweeney so to Stephen Baker. So close right there. Get anything close to Baker, though, he'll haul it in. Second and 15 at the Fresno State 16. Smith and Taylor, the wide receiver. There's a shovel pass to Mosley, and boy, were they waiting for it. Gary Halsey from Jerome, Idaho, and Jim Pasiello from Trumbell, Connecticut. Brought him down. Halsey, 6'5", 295 pounds. He's only a sophomore, but he wins this battle with Mosley right there in that little shovel pass. Halsey, quite a hump there to bring down in the middle of that big defensive line for the Aggies. It's third and 14, Fresno State, at the 17-yard line. So far, the Bulldogs have had only three rushing plays. They've thrown the ball 21 times. Here comes number 22 to Mosley. To the 20, struggles to get out of bounds and does at the 22. Pick up of just five. But it's five more to the plus side for Kevin Sweeney. Take a look at it again. The drop back there by Sweeney. Not a primary receiver. Mosley coming out of the backfield, but he is a good one. All there runs him out of bounds. Barry Belli ready to punt on fourth down. Kendall Smith is deep for Utah State. Chris Dugan to make the snap. Nice high spiral by Belli. Kendall Smith retreats, slips one tackle, retreats another five yards. Now comes up the sidelines and out of bounds he goes and a penalty marker dropped. Dropped in the vicinity of uh, James Rivera of Fresno State. 43-yard punt and uh, the return by Kendall Smith. There he is, the wide receiver that also doubles as a punt return yep. man there. Getting, there's the clip on Rivera. So Larry Rice from Sunnyvale, California will walk this off against Utah State. This is the last game of the 86 season for both Fresno State and Utah State and both have tough non-conference games in September in 87. Fresno State will play at Washington State and then at UCLA. Clipping on the return. First down. And guess what Utah State has to do? They have to go up against the likes of Kentucky and Nebraska to start 1987. So the line of scrimmage is the 13 for Utah State. A scoreless battle so far. 13 minutes left in the first half. Brown stutter stepping in the middle and not for very far. Dropped at the 15. John O'Leary, the linebacker from Oakland, on the hit. It's got to be a great contest for the Aggies. They have everything to gain and nothing to lose as we look at it again. Number 20, Demetrius Brown, the leading rusher, running into the line of scrimmage there. He's only run for 235 yards this year and right under three yards per carry. Kendall Smith is wide left. Pat Newman wide right. Second and eight at the 15. Two tight ends, James and Petey Maiden. Dropped by Petey Maiden, the tight end. Should have had it. David Grayson right with him, but the pass by Ponich was there. Right on the hands of Maiden that time. Grayson was trailing. Could have been a nice pickup. The Utah State Aggies have enough trouble moving the ball offensively. When they get one in their hands, they really can't afford to drop it. Completed one out of seven for five yards. That's quarterback Tom Ponich. 
We have no score, but the only serious threat has been by Fresno State on three different occasions. In the first quarter, a pass interception by the Aggies, and then two fumbles by the Bulldogs, recovered by Utah State. Third and eight. Down he goes. The hit is made by Turner, John Turner of Fresno State. There's number 50, John Turner there. The, red, the, the Bulldogs defensively are doing a good job all across the line. Greg Atari also was putting pressure on their number 57, but Turner was primarily the one that brought him down. A lot of pressure defensively. Eric Mandel has been doing a great job of punting for Utah State, and he roots this one out, sending Baker all the way back to the 43. Baker running laterally, trying to pick up, pick up some blocking help, and is dropped at the 49. Again, it's Bill Stewart from the Utah State Special Teams making the tackle on Baker. 45 yards on the punt, a six-yard return by Baker. Well, I've talked about field position being an advantage and so important in the game, but it hasn't seemed to make any difference to these ball clubs so far in the first half of this contest. Regardless of where they get the ball, the offenses have seemed to be quite inept. Kevin Sweeney at quarterback. Anthony Mosley, James Williams, split backs for Kevin. Sweeney now needs 74 yards to break Doug Flutie's mark. 74. He's putting up the rainbow. Can uh, Baker run under it and grab it? Nope. Could not do it. Tony Brown doing a nice job on pass defense for Utah State. Brown is a sophomore from Oklahoma City. Well, I like the way you call that one, Mike, a rainbow, because Sweeney just lofted it up in the air. The idea was Baker just needed to run under it, but Tony Brown hung with him stride for stride. Last week, we were in Honolulu, Hawaii, and had a chance to see quite a few rainbows in the sky. Uh, the Bulldogs saw quite a few rainbows on the field last week, too. And More Kelly, Skipper, to. Kelly Skipper saw stars when he took a hit reason he's not playing tonight for Fresno State. An outstanding running back. Second and ten. Look at this razzle-dazzle. Sweeney throwing. No good. That was the Fresno State version of the flea flicker. He was throwing for James Williams. Now watch how many times the ball changes hands. There's Sweeney handing off to Williams, Williams to Jenkins, back to Sweeney. And Sweeney goes back to Williams. <laughs> Ball's a little bit underthrown to Williams there. You see him come back, making a diving attempt for it there, but it was well underthrown. Kevin Sweeney stats. 13 completions, 18 attempts, one intercepted, 99 yards on the night. He is 74 shy of the new NCAA record. We have no score in this game. Sweeney delivers, and it is complete. The grab is made by Brock Smith. Brock is out of bounds at the 38 of Utah State. Brock had a little conversation there with the official. Let's look at Sweeney there. The pass protection is nice. Closes in on him a little. There's Brock Smith, who could really go for the long one. Chad Crossclair knocking him out of bounds. That'll be a first down for Fresno State at the 38. And now, Kevin Sweeney did 61 yards for the record. Sweeney, 14 out of 20, 112 yards. Jenkins in motion. Bulldogs try to cross him up. The running play netted about three yards. Mosley got the ball down to the 36. The Aggies are aware that Sweeney and the Bulldogs are going to be going for that passing record, so they're going to have to run every now and then just to keep them loose because the Aggies have to be anticipating that Kevin and the Bulldogs will be throwing the ball for the most part. Rather than ever now and then, once in a while, perhaps. I believe five rushing plays by Fresno State to date. Second and eight at the 36. Sweeney puts this one up, and it might have been intercepted. Maybe should have been. Tony Brown had his hands on the ball as Kevin Sweeney was throwing for Ron Jenkins, a flanker back. Well, this is another kind of rainbow pass there. He lost it in the air. 
Hope that maybe Jenkins can run underneath it. Brown is the guy that almost picks it off though for the Aggies. It hit Brown on the shoulder pad. <laughs> he had his eye on the receiver, not watching the ball. Third down and eight, Fresno State. Ball still at the 36 of Utah State. 10 minutes, 43 seconds left in the second quarter. This one is dropped by Brock Smith, and a penalty marker goes down. The penalty might be called on Al Smith, the linebacker. He was right in the area, going stride for stride with the with the end, number two, Brock Smith. There's Sweeney there getting the pass off. He gets hit right after it, but I think the pass bounces right off the hands of Smith. Well, the official tell us who's the who's the culprit out there and who the infractions against. Pass interference on the defense. First down. And a first down at the 30. So evidently Smith did give him a little push there that we could not see from this vantage point. Yeah, but Sweeney seemed to be limping a little bit as he came out to the line of scrimmage. A real hit on Kelly Brooks. Brooks filling in for Anthony Mosley, and the pads poured to him right at the 30. Leading the defensive surge, Jim Pascielo, with help from the linebacker, James Jackson. And head coach Jim Sweeney there pacing the sidelines. We may set this record and not score any points the way things are going. But again, Fresno State has been a good second-half team the last couple of years. Meanwhile, Utah State hasn't shown any inclination on offense. Sweeney batted up into the air. It's intercepted. It's grabbed off by Gary Halsey. And Halsey is tackled and put down at around the 45, and a penalty marker is down. A lot of pressure that time by the Aggies. They tipped this ball in the air before Halsey came up with it. Let's take a look at it again. Sweeney there dropping back. Couldn't see who it was, but number 74 there picked off the interception. It's nothing new for Halsey, a defensive tackle, to make an interception. He intercepted one against San, uh, San Jose State and went in for a touchdown. I like to watch him run, though. I like to see 295 pounds lumbering down that green field. You know how tall he is? Six feet, nine inches tall, 295 pounds. Why isn't he with Rod Tuller's Utah State basketball team? Well, he's only a sophomore, and Chuck Shelton says he'll grow. He'll fill out by the time he's a senior. Clipping on the return of the interception. First down. So the clipping penalty against the Aggies will move the ball all the way back to the 27. Tom Ponich at quarterback. Brown and Timo Tagaloa are the running backs. Ponich overthrowing his tight end, Tom James. Greg Ramsey putting a great deal of pressure on number seven, Ponich. Chuck Shelton, 51 years old, in his first year at Utah State. He's rebuilding. He's got a lot of youngsters on this team. The Aggies were only three and eight last year. They're three and seven at this point. Shelton wants to be better than they were last year at least. Kendall Smith is to the right, Pat Newman to the left. Out of the spread, the first time that Utah State has shown the spread. Here comes Ramsey. Ponich gets away. Ponich to the 30. And then he's put down by Anthony Nunn and James Rivera. Nice scramble by the senior from Billings, Montana. When you have that many people coming, including the strong safety number five, Michael Stewart, you're going to see him right there at the left of your screen. When you have that many people blitzing, if you don't sack the quarterback, he's got a lot of room to run if he breaks through that initial wall of defenders. Officials time out for the measurement. Boy, that's about as close as they come. How close is it? That close. Thank you, Larry Rice. Utah State nothing. Fresno State nothing. Nine and a half minutes. Really, the only excitement has been <laughs> if Sweeney can get the record in the first half. 
I don't know if I said this has been a weird first half. If I haven't, let me go on record as saying this is really strange out here. Two tight ends now by Utah State, Petey Maiden and Tom James. Kendall Smith, wide right. Inches for a first down. Quarterback sneak, Ponich has it. Ponich just had to take a step and he had it. And a first down, Utah State. Take a look at it again from the ground level there, just moving over behind his right guard there who wedges him out a little bit, and it is a first down for the Aggies. Short while ago, I mentioned that Fresno State, for the most part, in the last two years, has been a good second-half team. Not so for the team in white, Utah State. The Aggies have scored only five times in the second half of games this year. Stewart, Williamson, Webster, Nichols in the secondary for Fresno State. Ponich on a slant in, and it is complete to the tight end, Petey Maiden. And he's pulled out of bounds by Jay Wilkerson. Petey Maiden from Seaside, California, the number two receiver on this Utah State team. And really a nice grab by Maiden that time because the pass by Ponish was really kind of low and in the direction that Maiden was going, you saw the catch right there. He had to kind of reach down behind low to pull it up before he turned up field. First down, Utah State at the 48 of Fresno State. Sweeney has done well in this first half, and he's zeroing in on that Flutie record, but neither team has been able to score. It's Demetrius Brown. Shoots ahead to the 43, brought down by the cornerback, Greg Williamson. Pick up a five by Brown. Nice pickup by Brown that time, five yards. As a team, they only had six yards total offense in the first quarter. Going in, Kevin Sweeney need a, needed 173 yards to set the new NCAA mark. He currently stands at 112 yards in the game, needing 61. Second and five at the 43 of Fresno State. from Auckland, New Zealand, squirts through, and he is able to pick up a first down for Utah State. David Grayson brought him down. Timo Tagaloa. Auckland, New Zealand. Well, he was a rugby player down there, and in fact, he's had only two years experience in organized college football. Yet he scored a couple of touchdowns for Utah State, and he's only a sophomore. First down, the ball at the 38 of Fresno State. 7.47 left in the first half. Ponich in trouble. David Grayson climbed on his back and put him down, but Grayson had a lot of help. O'Leary was in there. So was Greg Ramsey. Ponich had a little problem with the footing out there. We've seen a lot of... Uh, the players out there have a little traction problem, so maybe the field has taken a beating in this year-long season, and it's not as good as it should be. Kendall Smith goes to the sidelines. Wide receiver now is Pat Newman. They have just one wide out. Newman to the left. Second and eight at the 36. No score. on the bootleg. Now he wants to throw off of it. And he overthrows the receiver. He was going for Newman. Newman stopped at about the eight, and the pass was thrown down around the goal line. Newman was working against Byron Nichols down there, and Nichols was giving him all that he wanted. Newman never could get away from him. Let's take a look at it again. There's number 17. Pat Newman there, working against Nichols. Tries to slow down, tries to go deep. Also in the area is number 19, Rod Webster. Tom Ponich, the Utah State quarterback, has completed two of 10 attempts, just 19 yards. Third down and eight, Utah State. Hanslick is the fullback. Brown is the tailback. And a timeout has been called by Utah State. 
Six minutes, 51 seconds left in the first half, and still no scoring in this one. Today's game is brought to you in part by Allstate. Leave it to the good hands, people, to ensure your car, business, home, and family. And by the California State Lottery. Watch it grow. Play Lotto. I always try to scrape off in a pattern. And if I get two the same, I try to sell it to my wife. She didn't buy this one. And he says, you're kidding. And I says, no, I'm not kidding. Look. Then he grabbed me, and he says, "Hun, I love you. And I come and going, brace yourself, honey. You just win $25,000. And I'm waving the ticket, and he's going, what? Who knows? I could be the big winner. And I'm looking forward to it, too. <laughs> A simple reminder from the lottery. If you don't play, you can't win. If your home was destroyed, would your insurance pay to completely rebuild it? Fact is, even with an inflation clause, your policy may not cover today's higher rebuilding costs. Leave it to the good hands, people. Allstate can make sure you're protected. With an Allstate home replacement cost guarantee, we'll pay to completely rebuild your home, no matter what the cost. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Who would have thought coming in that both teams would not score in this first half? That's the situation right now, and there is the update on the Sweeney Flutie pursuit. Kevin is just 61 behind the former great star, Doug Flutie of Boston College, now with the Chicago Bears. Third and eight, Utah State at the 36 of Fresno. Ponich on the delay. Demetrius Brown bumping his way close to a first down. John O'Leary caught up with him and finally put him down. But it's going to be close to a first down for Utah State. Good block by Brett Snitsius, the offensive left tackle. And a good call that time by Chuck Shelton. Everybody in the ballpark knew they had to throw the ball on that one, and they crossed him up with a run. We'll have to look and see if it is a first down. It is not. Yeah, it's shy just about a yard. So call it fourth and less than one. The ball near the 29. Field goal attempt. Holding will be Darren Long. The kicker is Dean Garner. Strong leg. This one is no good. It was sliced to the right. The field goal attempt by Garner, no good. And still, we haven't been able to produce a score. 6.07 left first half. The way I see it, people used to know about nature, respected it. Then they figured they'd try to make it better. Take beer. Can you imagine why anyone would want to add anything artificial to something that just comes naturally from ingredients like grain, water, barley, hops? <laughs> Neither can Coors. Toyota dealers want to make this the November to remember for great deals. You're going to remember this first big sales event of the new model year. Lots of 87s in stock. They want to deal on the all-new Camrys, exciting new FX-16s, and Tercels. Don't forget, it's the last year sales tax is deductible. Your last chance to save hundreds more dollars. Make this your November to remember. Uh, who could ask for anything more? Be your Toyota dealer now. <laughs> You can't afford to miss Copeland Sports Winterfest Ski and Sports Sale. This weekend in all Copeland Sports locations. This multi-million dollar sales event. This weekend, Copeland Sports, Fresno, Visalia, Bakersfield. Let's give you a quick update now on Kevin Sweeney. Sweeney so far has completed 15 of 22 passes for 121 yards. He is just 52 yards shy of a new NCAA career passing yardage record. Kevin Sweeney ready to throw on the run. He's got a man open, overthrows him. Chris Dugan leaped to try to make that grab, but the pass was too tall. Five and a half minutes left in the first half. No score, Utah State and Fresno State. Mike Walden and Don Perkins from Bulldog Stadium in Fresno, California. I know Kevin's disappointed on that one. He got a little pressure and had to move around, but Chris Dugan was wide open, and that's one he should have connected on. Mike, 
Devin Sweeney now 52 yards away. There's the handoff to James Williams. He picks up close to a first down. It might be a little shy. He needed about a yard and a half. The tackle is made by James Jackson. Fresno State has had some opportunities. Sweeney is having a good first half. But the Bulldogs haven't been able to get in for a score. Thwarted by an interception and two fumbles recovered by Utah State. And the Aggies haven't been able to generate much in offense. So it's a scoreless deadlock here with 5.20 left in the first half. But, Mike, we've got a fourth down situation, and the Bulldogs are going to go for it. They, oh, this is neat. They need just a few inches. We'll go out of the full house backfield. Mosley, Williams, and Sims for quarterback Kevin Sweeney. Mosley, 45, pulled on at the 41. Everybody expected one of the three backs in the full house to go straight ahead. Instead, Mosley crossed them up, swinging around left end. Looking at it from the ground level, Pondre Davis right there, number five, finally comes up to make the stop on Mosley, but not before the first down was picked up. First down for Fresno State at the Aggie, 41. Jenkins and uh, Brock Smith check it. Jenkins and Gene Taylor are wide to the right side. From the Aggie 41, here comes Jenkins in motion. Sweeney dumps this win. Did he catch it or did he trap it? They rule that it was trapped by Dugan. No completion. And, of course, this partisan crowd here in Fresno booing that call. Let's take a look at it again. You're going to see the pass there. A little pressure on Sweeney. The pass is underthrown. But, Mike, that's the kind of pass that Kevin's been having a problem throwing ever since he's been injured. He's just been totally ineffective at that short game at 45-degree uh, angles in either direction. He was hurt October the 4th in a 45-41 loss at Spartan Stadium in San Jose. That day, he passed for 337 yards, but the Bulldogs lost. He's having a good first here, half here tonight, but neither team has been able to score. The dump off to Williams. Williams struggles to get to the 39. The tackle is made by Mike Moraz, who flipped him down with help from Al Smith. And I'll say this, then I won't say it anymore about the passing difficulties of Kevin Sweeney, but when he throws out at right angles, like in the flat that time, he can do it okay, or throwing deep is okay. In between there, he has all kinds of problems. Third and long now for Kevin Sweeney. Brock Smith, Gene Taylor, Stephen Baker are the wide receivers. to Brock Smith at the 30. And he is pulled down at the 27 by Al Smith. Well, the Smith brothers hook up on that one. Brock Smith catching the ball for the Bulldogs. Al Smith, great defensive linebacker for the Utah State Aggies. You're going to see him right there coming up, making the tackle. Good speed on that 6'1", 230-pound senior. Kevin Sweeney now needs 40 yards. And we have four minutes left in the first half. 40 yards to overtake Doug Flutie. Mosley to the 20. Mosley almost got a first down. Stopped at about the 18 by Wade Harmon, an inside linebacker. Oh, Jim Sweeney's going to miss Anthony Mosley next year, a senior. Great running back, great all-purpose back. Here he's doing his thing as a pass receiver. Runs with a lot of explosion out there. He can be a tailback, a fullback, also an excellent receiver. Six for 18 yards. And Kevin Sweeney is getting ever so close now. 31 yards. Here's the handoff to Williams at the 10. Stopped at the 7. Andre Davis, the right quarterback, brought James Williams down. Slippery guy there. We're looking at it from the line of scrimmage. You're going to see number 40, Tim Kendall, come up there, take a shot at him. Right there, slips off of him. Williams turns upfield before he's finally brought down by Davis. Nice game, though. Good block, too, by Paul Portizzi, 263-pound junior. We have three minutes left in the first half. The Aggies and the Bulldogs, no score. 
You gotta stop pestering me, son. I'm not what you're after. I'm a crowing chicken. Rooster, that is. You gotta go to Kentucky Fried Chicken if you want great, I say great tasting chicken. No one cooks it tender like the Colonel. But just one taste of that finger licking good chicken and you'll never go anywhere else. There ain't no substitute for honest to goodness Kentucky Fried Chicken. I say Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken and right. First and goal at the seven. Sweeney dumps it off to Jenkins. Touchdown. Fresno State. Kevin Sweeney, his 66th career touchdown pass on a seven-yarder to Ron Jenkins. 15 for the year, an excellent pass play, a lot of motion out there, backs crissing and crossing, and Jenkins there going into the flat there wide open. Jenkins is from Manual Arts High School in Los Angeles, had a couple of years of J.C. ball at East Los Angeles Junior College. Last year, he caught 52 passes in J.C. ball for 856 yards. The extra point by Barry Belli, and finally, one of these teams has been able to score, and it's 7-0 Fresno State with just under three minutes left. spectacular taste you just can't pass up Pepsi the choice of a new generation have you looked at Allstate homeowners insurance rates lately nope they may be lower than you think they are low leave it to the good hands people leave it to the good hands people bring your policy into Allstate and compare see how low our rates really are Leave it to the good hands, wow. people. So low. You're in good hands with all states. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Fresno State has been flirting with a touchdown. The Bulldogs finally get it, a drive of 71 plays. Jenkins catching the Sweeney's touchdown pass. The kickoff by Barry Belli. Kendall Smith, 20-yard line. Smith is going to be out of bounds around the 35. There is Kevin Sweeney, who needs 31 yards to go past Doug Flutie. And we have a penalty marker drop back here at around the 17. And generally, Mike, when something like that happens, it's on the return team, but we'll have to watch Gene Taylor made the tackle that time on number nine Kendall Smith on the return knocking him out of the bounds well I can tell by the direction they're looking who the walk off is going to be against no surprise to anyone Sutton Hanslake will be one of the on a return, first and ten. Running backs for Utah State. Timo Tagaloa will be the other, and the quarterback is Tom Ponich. Seven nothing, Fresno State. Well, you're in a bad fix when your passing game's kind of weak, your running game's no good, and you've got 90 some yards to go. Newman to the left, Kendall Smith to the right. Ball is on the eight-yard line. The Utah State eight. Sutton Hanslick bumping his way up close to the ten-yard line. The hit made by the nose guard, Mike Walker. Walker is a senior, Richmond, California. And also from this state is Sutton Hanslick, the ball carrier. Fresno State now is called a timeout, 2.40. Left here in the first half, 7-0, Bulldogs over Utah State. Kevin Sweeney is 24 yards away from Flutie. Before this.
this, probably the only thing I ever won in my life actually was two cakes and a cakewalk at a carnival. So when I bought that ticket, I said, hey, you're a winner. I scratched it from the bottom up and bang, there was a hundred bucks just like that. And I held it up and I looked at it and I looked at it again and it was a hundred dollars. Came to California, bought two lottery tickets, scratched them off and there it was, an instant fortune, one hundred thousand dollars. A simple reminder from the lottery, if you don't play, you can't win. Close to 33,000. Capacity is only 30,000 here at Bulldog Stadium, and they hope to see their favorite, Kevin Sweeney, get the record in the first half. And he's just 24 yards away with two minutes and 40 seconds left. But for the time being, at least, Utah State has the ball. It'll be second down and five. The ball is at the 13. A crisp autumn evening here in Fresno, California. 53 degrees right now and a beautiful day here in the San Joaquin Valley. Hanslick, Hanslick up to the 16. He'll be shy of a first down by three yards. Anthony Nunn, Mark Olson put him down. And another timeout has been called by Fresno State. The Bulldogs using their timeouts now. See if they can get the ball back and get all of this Flutie Sweeney business out of the way in the first half. Baggies are having a tough time this year. They're three and seven for the year. They were only three and eight all of last year. But give Chuck Shelton a little time. This is his first year there with the Aggies. It's after spending nine years with Drake. So he's rebuilding. Got a lot of young ball players on the on the team, both offensively and defensively. He's got big ones, though. He's got big ones, and they're still growing as we look at head coach Jim Sweeney. And on the other side, there's the Aggies. The quarterback, Tom Ponich, getting some sideline instruction. Well, the Aggies will need all of the help they can get because the road in 1987 doesn't get any easier opening at Kentucky and at Nebraska. And then in 1988 and 89, Utah, Utah State has to play at Oklahoma. And of course, the Aggies play BYU every year. So it's a tough schedule for Utah State. Could make for a very long season. Tom Ponich, a 23-year-old senior from Billings, Montana. At quarterback, third down and two, seven nothing Fresno State, with the Bulldogs hoping to get the ball back before the end of the half. Ponies just did get rid of it, throwing in the vicinity of Tom James, the tight end. Michael Stewart on the blitz that time. He was coming from the blind side of Ponich, presumably blind side, because Ponich saw him or felt him coming anyway and got the ball off in a hurry. And the Bulldogs will indeed get the ball back before halftime. Eric Mandel to punt. Baker is deep, standing at the 50. Baker picks it up at the 44. 50. Baker. 40. Slips and falls at the 39. A 40-yard punt and an 18-yard return by Baker. But now, Sweeney. 17 out of 26, one intercepted. Kevin Sweeney has passed for 149 yards and one touchdown, needs 24 yards to surpass Doug Flutie. Two minutes, 16 seconds left here in the first half. Sweeney will operate now from the 40. Sweeney across the middle of Baker. Baker stutter step and he couldn't find any running room and down he goes as the hit is made by linebacker Al Smith. They'll spot the ball down at the 32 and now Sweeney needs 17 yards.
the 13. Paul Flug, the tight end, fumbled earlier in the game. Tony Brown put a hit on Flug at the 10. The ball kicked back to the 13. Flug was able to go back and get it. And Sweeney was almost buried as he delivered that ball. Took quite a lick there. He had a lot of pressure on him. This is a good pass because he was really decked right there by Mark Moraz, but got the pass right on target to Flug. A minute left here in the first half. Kevin is going to have to run and takes another hard lick. Mark Moraz from Glendora, California. 6'4", 255. Moraz and Gary Halsey have been outstanding along with Jim Pasciello for Utah State. Kevin Sweeney got the record. It's just now being announced over the public address system. Brent Damati, the public address announcer, has just informed the crowd that that last pass completion to Baker put him over the mark, and the game has been stopped here at Fresno. The entire Bulldog team pours out to congratulate their four-year quarterback, Kevin Sweeney. Kevin Sweeney has 175 yards tonight. Please welcome. This is the voice of the public address announcer, Brent Damati. Please welcome. Cunningham, the athletic director at Fresno State, is out there, the man in the red jacket. There is Lucille Sweeney, Jim's mother, Karen Stern, Kevin Sweeney's fiance. Fresno State athletic director Dr. Gary Cunningham is presenting the game ball to Kevin. Joining Kevin on the field and in turn receiving the game ball from him are his mother, Seal Sweeney, and his fiance, Karen Stern. Kevin, on behalf of the Fresno State Athletic Department, Bulldog Football, the University and all of your Red Wave fans throughout the San Joaquin Valley, congratulations on a glorious career as a Fresno Rich Olson, offensive coach for Fresno State. First, the hug, of course, by his dad, Jim Sweeney. The entire Sweeney clan is here tonight. Eight children in the family. Kind of makes you do up, Mike, when you see a father and son embrace like that. Five sisters, two brothers. Kevin is the youngest. go back to the telegram that was sent earlier by Doug Flutie said good luck I hope you break my record break it but don't shatter it I don't know with another half to go here it just may get shattered real badly look at all of the names in college football history Jim Plunkett Stanford John Reeves Jack Thompson the throwing Samoan up at Washington State Mark Herman of Purdue Jim McMahon BYU Ben Bennett from Duke Doug Flutie, Boston College, and now topping the list, the 23-year-old senior quarterback of Fresno State. He's got to be a very relieved young man. Scott Johnson, the sports information director at Fresno State. Paul Schechter, the Bulldog trainer. Now back to the game. Fresno State with a 7-0 lead, trying to make it 10-0 on this field goal attempt by Barry Bella. No good. No good. We still have 29 seconds left in the first half. Sweeney has the record, and the Bulldogs hold on to a 7-0 lead after that missed field goal attempt by Barry Belli. Mr. Money in the Bank finally missed one. I think he'd only missed two in his career. There's now, Kevin Sweeney there on the sideline. If I had to use one word to describe Kevin Sweeney, I think the first word that comes to mind, durable. I would use courageous. But That's whatever words word. you use, uh, he's a very unselfish player, and his teammates wanted that record as badly for him as he wanted it for himself. 
Kevin Sweeney has not missed a game in four years at Fresno State. And what a beating he has taken over that period of time. Never out with an injury. Tom Ponich moving straight ahead in the quarterback sneak. And in talking with Kevin Sweeney, I said, if you had it in your power, to select how you would get the record, what would it be? He said it would be an 80-yard bomb to Stephen Baker. It wasn't 80 yards, but it was 15 yards to Baker. Well, now we've got all the hype out of the way. Maybe we can get the 80-yard bomb here in the second half of well, this game. Well, the first half is history, and Kevin Sweeney has put his name into the NCAA College Football Record Books. Kevin Sweeney is in NCAA history, and it's a seven to nothing lead, the Bulldogs over Utah State. Seven nothing, the team goes off the field. It'll be interesting. I'm sure both teams were kind of excited about this, so they can get down to business here and finish out this season with a good half of football now in the second half. Let's hear from Father Jim Sweeney. He's got to have a big smile. Jocular Irish face of his. Vic Jacobs, go. <laughs> okay, Coach Sweeney, your son is the most prolific passer in college football history. How do you feel? I feel very proud for him and his football teammates who've worked very hard with him, not just this year, but for four years, and for Coach Olson, who's been his tutor and mentor, and for the, all of the people in the program, the Red Wave, what a wonderful group they've been. You see the support that they've given us through the years here, and I appreciate that. I just would like to see us not self-destruct so much and be dropping the ball. I think some of this thing with the Flutie record seeking after that has caused us to have some fumbleitis out there. That's a big Utah State defensive front. They're an excellent group. They've got a great defensive front tradition, starting back with Merlin Olson and a lot of other great people. And Roland Jones, those people, those defensive front guys are big, and they can put a good pass rusher. They always have. And when you're not running it at them, and they know that it's going to be just pass, I'm glad the thing is over. We don't have to play that kind of football now. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a little better game plan going. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Good luck in the second half. And we'll have more halftime festivities right after this. Kevin Sweeney has the record. He got it in the first half at the intermission. 7-0 Fresno State. Good work, Starship. Why don't you guys take a break? How about a Pepsi? of a new generation. Beginning Monday on the 10 o'clock news. I'm Bonnie Montevecchi. Beginning Monday on the 10 o'clock news, we're going to take you to a new environment. Right here at Marineland by the Pacific. I'm taking you swimming with the sharks. Yes, you're going to have to see it to believe it. I can barely believe it myself. That's beginning Monday on the 10 o'clock news. Go swimming with sharks beginning Monday on Central California's only primetime news. The 10 o'clock news from TV 26. Looking out for number one. Looking out for number one. Toyota, looking out for you with the Toyota Standard Bed. It works as hard as you do. It takes on a big payload, but the price is easy to take. Looking out for number one. Right now, your Toyota dealer is looking out for you by passing along factory-to-dealer incentives so you can save even more money on Toyota trucks. Who could ask for anything more? Sheridan Smugglers, Fresno's mobile four-star rated inn, offers you more than you dreamed at less than you thought. A relaxing pool and spa set in a park-like landscape. And many guest-pleasing extras exercise and weight room, free satellite TV, in-room coffee, room service. You'll love the life of Sheridan Smugglers. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium. And you know, besides Kevin Sweeney, other prominent Bulldogs polishing off brilliant 86 campaigns. We now focus in on the other dynamic dogs. 
somewhat overshadowed in light of Kevin Sweeney's quest for the NCAA passing record in 1986 have been some outstanding performances by some of the other Bulldog players. Stephen Baker and the punt return unit have provided a lot of material for the highlights film with spectacular runs like this. The running of Skipper, Williams, and Mosley clearly established the presence of a strong ground attack to complement the aerial fireworks. And the kicking teams, led by unflappable 5'9", 160-pound Barry Belli, time and time again gave the Bulldogs excellent field position, or as was the case on October 18th, the margin of victory. The game will come down to this, a 47-yard field goal attempt by Barry Belli. Ron Jenkins will hold, Chris Dubin will make the snap, but the Tigers call timeout. They want to give Belli more time to contemplate his fate. I think there was like 40 seconds left, and we were like on about the 45-yard line, and he ran the ball a couple times, and I was just thinking, you know, that he's, he's got that much confidence in me that he's just going to run the ball and let me kick it. When I was ready to go, he just told me to go out there and just kick it, and that they, they weren't a very strong rush team, and not to worry about the rush, not to worry about anything, just go out and kick it. And then they called a timeout. He came over to talk to me, not to relieve any pressure, but I think just to chat, make it look like Coach was going to have something to do with his success. Came over, I said, trying to make you nervous. I laughed. He said, yeah, well, there's nothing to be nervous about. Jenkins to hold. Dugan makes the snap. It's down. It's up. It's got the distance. It's good. Jim Sweeney has said it many times before. Barry Belli, says the head coach of Fresno State, he's like money in the bank. Belli has just made another deposit. When it comes to money in the bank, you're not looking for a withdrawal, you're looking for a deposit. And when you run clear down the street, you don't want to find the bank closed. So Barry, when he gets down in there, he's pretty accurate. Now, he's going to find a way to deposit those three bucks for you every time, or three million, or 300, depending on how you value three points at that particular time. And as a kicker, you get one shot. It's a cruel, cruel existence. And, and, and very, very demanding of being poised under pressure. Now, I think people who, as kickers, run off at the mouth a lot, uh, you know, are... are uh, Sometimes lacking in confidence, Barry is very quiet, very reserved, and I think it has an inner strength that everybody doesn't have. When you're talking about Barry and attitude, you're talking about a guy with a great attitude. He's a hard worker. He works diligently, even if by himself in the summer, kicks repeatedly all day long. He has not taken shortcuts to become a kicker. He's very coachable, and he's very accountable. He does well when you ask him to do well. He's always done his best under the most dire circumstance, pressure-wise. I don't look at the score, I don't look at the clock, I just, I mean, you go out there and you kick each kick the same, whether it's the first kick and first score in the game or it's the last, you know, last second score, it doesn't matter. Barry's account grows with interest. He now holds the PC2A kick scoring record, the PC2A field goal record, and with one year of eligibility remaining, has eclipsed the FSU career scoring record. In his senior year, the Bakersfield native will also be within reach of two NCAA records, field goals, and kick scoring. All this with an added responsibility this year, punting. And I would think he will be counted among the top draft choices, not only because of his field goal kicking ability, but next year he will also have honed his punting skills, and his punting skills are awesome. He kicks the ball sometimes as well in practice as Ray Guy did. How do I know that? Because I stood next to Ray Guy for a year every day and watched him punt. Then the third thing that he does, which few people, if any, recognize, he kicks off with such tremendous height. And uh, he kicks it off high enough and not into the end zone so that they have to run it out. Those three factors, kickoff, field goal, and putting, are going to make him maybe the highest drafted kicker in America next year in his senior year. It's very exciting to think about his future. And so in the last game of the season, what better time for an accounting major to audit his 1986 performance and give a forecast for next year? When I look back, there's always kicks that I say I could have made. And um, 
I'm just glad there's an extra year to do it again, you know, try to do it even better because there's always room for improvement. And we'll have more halftime festivities right after this. Thank you. Silver bullet tonight. Sally, don't look now, but he's here. I guess don't look. And he's sitting at my station. Fran, you owe me. All right. <laughs> Blue, how do I look? Like Sally. Thanks. Coors light, please. I'll get your waitress. <laughs> I'm just not in the mood. Go slowing down with a silver bullet tonight. Coors light beer. If you could build the best performance car in the world, you'd want the best gasoline. Chevron unleaded gasolines with the high-tech Tecrolene additive. The best at controlling deposits while cleaning intake systems. Not just fuel injectors, complete intake systems. Chevron with Tecrolene. Now you can drive the best no matter what car you drive. Is one gasoline really the best? Now that I'm 60, I'm going to relax and enjoy my Prime. Like the extra interest I'm earning on my Prime Plus CD at Valley Federal Savings. Yes, sir, an extra half percent interest just for savers 60 and older. And Valley Federal's the only place that pays the Prime Plus bonus on top of their normal high rate. Meantime, I've got personal business to attend to, and I'm chairman of the board. The Prime Plus CD and the Prime Plus bonus, only at Valley Federal Savings. From the moment you walk on to the 8-acre Paul Everett RV Center, you'll find something unique. It could be the 12-bay service center, or the fully stocked RV accessory store, or Paul Everett's overwhelming selection of name brand motorhomes, travel trailers, and fifth wheels. Then again, it could be the people. 45 of the most friendly, knowledgeable people in the RV business. So come on out to Paul Everett's RV Country, Freeway 99 at Central, and just follow the sign. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium, and yes, Kevin Sweeney has broken the record tonight. The Dogs lead Utah State 7-0 at the half, and I'll tell you, big games bursting out all over America tonight. Let's go to Vic's great wall of scores. There's only one other PC2 ace game tonight. Nevada Las Vegas was in Long Beach. The running Rebels destroyed the 49ers 31-8. And the big game in Berkeley, California, wins one for the Capra Joe Caps finale at California as they stun Stanford 17 to 11, the big game. Elsewhere, Arizona wins their fifth straight over the Sun Devils 34-17. UCLA all over Southern Cal by 20 at the Rose Bowl. Washington, Washington State, Washington all over Washington State 44-23 in Pullman. The Battle of Oregon, the Ducks over the Beavers 42-28 up in Corvallis. And the Boga Brothers, the Samoan Sackmen go to San Diego and is the Aztecs leading 7-0 in the first. Top 20 action around the nation. Joe Paterno says, Ole, we're in the Fiesta Bowl. Penn State 34 over Pittsburgh 14. Oklahoma, Nebraska, big eight classic confrontation every year. Oklahoma wins it on a late field goal, 20 to 17. Sooners are in the Orange Bowl. Huskers go to the Sugar Bowl. Michigan smells roses. They beat Ohio State 26 to 24. Down the Bayou, a tight game at the half. LSU leading. Who holds his Irish 14 to 13. And ho, oh, oh, ho, down in College Station, Jackie Sherry humiliates Jim Wacker's Horn Frogs 74 to 10 of the Southwest Conference action Arkansas zips SMU 41 nothing in Dallas Baylor in the snake pit in Waco beats Texas 18 to 13 keeps their faint cotton ball hopes alive the battle of South Carolina it's a tie Clemson and South Carolina tied at 21 Iowa and Minnesota in Golden Gopher land Golden Gophers over the Hawkeyes by three late in that game Don Perkins, Alma Mater, New Mexico, notches a win. They beat Memphis State by seven. Texas Tech, my sleeper of 1986. I think they're bowl bound, possibly independence. They go and beat Houston 34-7 in Lubbock. Elsewhere around the country today, Temple with Paul Palmer becoming the sixth all-time rusher in history, beats Rutgers 29-22. And the Crusaders' perfect season crushed by Boston College, 56-26 today for the Ivy League Championship. The Quakers top 
Cornell, 31-21 in Ithaca, New York, high above Cayuga's waters. And it's the 31st consecutive loss for the Lions. I do believe they're scheduling the Christians for the 87 schedule for Columbia. Hopefully they'll win one Brown or Hobram today in New York City. And we'll have more halftime festivities right after this. Monday on TV 26. You're a cross doctor? What of it? It's a very important job. Thank you for doing it. Learn the facts of life. Then at 6. A cookie in the hand turns to blubber on your can. Give me a break. Then at 6.30, this family's too close for comfort. Can I have a few words with you in private? That's the men's room. It's okay. There'll be nobody in there but us. Facts of life at 5.30. Give me a break at 6 and too close for comfort at 6.30. This is one popular approach to car design. It's an approach Honda has never taken. Perhaps that's why the Civic hatchback, with its low hood line and long roof line, is so distinctive, very tasty. At your Central California Honda dealer. Beautiful diamonds exquisite gold, an incredible selection of wedding sets, elegant timepieces, exceptional jewelry design and manufacturing. By far the Valley's largest collection of fine jewelry. Reasons why, for generations, Edmunds Jewelers has been such a brilliant facet in the glitter of Fresno. Edmunds Jewelers, in Fresno's Fashion Fair and in the Fulton Mall. <laughs> The people who made the original wine coolers observed their own holiday traditions. They blended white wine and real fruit in the spirit of the season. California Cooler, keeping the tradition alive. I think Jim Sweeney put it all in perspective, as he said right at the end of the first half. Now that all of that record business is out of the way, we can settle down and play some football. Indeed, the record business is out of the way. And Kevin Sweeney, his son, is now number one in the NCAA career yards passing department. Mike, it wasn't a real artistic first half, but like uh, Sweeney, Jim Sweeney said, now we can get it out of the way, we can play football. We did establish the record. The Bulldogs have a seven to nothing lead, so let's get on with the second half. You know, the uh, record uh, now that Sweeney holds, he has 10,582 yards, and here is the pass play, an 11-yard gain that put him ahead of Doug Flutie by one yard. The line of scrimmage was the 26 of Utah State, Sweeney throwing to Baker. Baker making a leaping grab at the 15 and crunched out of bounds. And now let's look at it from a different angle. You know, it's interesting because we were talking about because of the injuries to Sweeney, that was the kind of pass that he couldn't throw with accuracy. That time he was right on the money with it. And it was kind of neat to see Baker catch it because he's had such an outstanding career here for the Bulldogs. And it was kind of funny to watch all the players as they speculated on who would make the big yeah. catch. And now here is the touchdown, the only score in the game so far. This one didn't go to Stephen Baker. Instead, it went to a junior college transfer by the name of Ron Jenkins. Jenkins has great speed, and he might be the Stephen Baker for Fresno State next year. That's right. He's just a junior. He'll be coming back. They had it loaded up there on that right side, and Jenkins went in there with a nice catch for the TD. The halftime stats as Sweeney has set the new NCAA record. Kevin is 21 out of 30 for 175 yards, one touchdown. He has been intercepted twice and three sacks. And there you can see the halftime stats. 210 yards in offense for Fresno State, just 59 Utah State. Running game good looks kind of tired on both teams' parts. The Aggies have 40 yards rushing. The Bulldogs have 35. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the second half. If the Bulldogs are going to just uh, try to control the ball, maybe use the running game more, or if they're going to try to add to that record that Sweeney already has. Halftime score is 7 to nothing. Fresno State, the second half coming up.
This game is brought to you by Coors and Coors Light. The beers with a difference worth tasting. Coors to you, Bulldogs. And by Toyota and your Central Valley Toyota dealers. Toyota value and Toyota reliability. Who could ask for anything more? And by Coke, a taste so refreshing, so irresistible, your only choice will be to catch it. Catch the wave. Coke. You gotta stop pestering me, son. I'm not what you're after. I'm a crowing kicker. Rooster, that is. You gotta go to Kentucky Fried Chicken if you want great, I say great tasting chicken. No one cooks a tender like the Colonel. But just one taste of that finger licking good chicken and you'll never go anywhere else. There ain't no substitute for honest to goodness Kentucky Fried Chicken. I say Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. I really want to appreciate the Coors difference. Less heavy, easy drinking. I'll try spending some time doing this. Oh, yeah. Coors is the one. Well, come on over, baby. Real November dealing going on. It's your Toyota dealer's first big sales event of the 87 model year. And because he's loaded with inventory, it'll be a November to remember. You're gonna remember dealer incentives on selected trucks that could save you money. And extra value packages save up to $753. Most of all, you're going to remember the truck bucks you save. For great truck deals, make this your November to remember. Uh, who could ask for anything more? See your Toyota dealer now. <laughs> Hi. This is an X Headroom Pop Quiz. Blindfold, please. Huh. Quicker next time. In blind taste tests, which pop drink did more people prefer? The new taste of Coke or Pepsi? Uh, Pepsi! Wrong. Mm, I love trick questions. Coke. Coke! Coke. The new taste of Coke. It's true. You heard it here first. C catch the wave. Coke. See the incredible Coke KBOS video van tomorrow from noon to 2 at Hanoyans at Cedar and Butler. There'll be a special price on all your favorite Coke products. Catch the wave. Coke. We have a sports update to pass along to you that Mike Tyson scored a technical knockout over Trevor Burbick at 2 minutes and 35 seconds of the second round in Las Vegas to become the youngest heavyweight champion in history. Tyson knocked Burbick down twice in the second round. So Mike Tyson is the new heavyweight champion. And the Fresno State Bulldogs are trying to go a 9-2 and two record for 1986 as Kendall returns the second half kickoff by running out of bounds at the 24-yard line. By the way, Kevin Sweeney wasn't the only player honored here at Bulldog Stadium tonight. It was also a halftime presentation to Barry Belli. And he's done quite a bit this year. He became the PCAA's all-time leading kick scorer in 1986. He also became the all-time leader in career field goals in 1986. I'll tell you some more in a little bit. Utah State's ball, first and ten, the ball at the Aggie 24. Just underway in the second half, Mike Walden and Don Perkins. Kendall Smith wide to the right. Pass on a first hop to Smith. Kendall Smith, the leading receiver for Utah State. The free safety, Rod Webster, was guarding him on the play. Talking some more about the accomplishments of the junior place kicker, Barry Belli. He broke FSU's 29-year-old kick scoring record in 1986. He's the nation's leading kick scorer with a 9.4 average. He also... Pony to escape some way. To the 35, 40, to the 50. And he is brought down at the 49. The hit made by Anthony Nunn and Michael Stewart. An excellent scramble by Tom Ponich. A 28-yard run by the Utah State quarterback. Scrambling this time out of necessity. Look at all the red shirts around him there. When he breaks through that line of scrimmage, he sees lots of room to run. Gets a good block there from Hudson Sutton Hanslick. Goes downfield a long way before Anthony Nunn and some more red shirts corralling. Newman and Kendall Smith to the right side. Troy Turner to the left. 
It's Demetrius Brown, 45-40. Brown moving down to the 38. The nose guard, Mike Walker, caught up with him at the 38-yard line. It's going to be close to another first down, and credit Matt Panosak, the right guard for the Aggies, with a great block freeing Demetrius Brown. Let's take a look at it again. Number 20 there, Brown there, going into the inside, breaking outside. Right there, runs right through a would-be arm tackle before he's finally brought down by number 90, who's Walker. A first down for Utah State. The ball at the Fresno State, 38. The Bulldogs lead, 7-0. Just underway in the second half. Sutton Hanslick, maybe a yard. Jethro Franklin put him down. Franklin, a junior from San Jose. He has had 19 and a half quarterback sacks this season. The defense is tough to run against. They're 13 in the nation there. There's Jethro Franklin, quite a sack man, but also plays good from the line of scrimmage. Second and nine, Utah State. This is only really the second serious threat by Utah State in this game. 7-0, Fresno on top. In motion, Petey Maiden. Ponich is able to complete the pass, or did he? No, he dropped it. Newman had the ball for a moment, but once he hit the ground, he lost it. Pat Newman. Pass was a little throw, a low on that one, but Tom Ponich there gets a lot of pressure. There's Newman, number 17. And you can see the pass. It wasn't really that low. He had room to catch it, but it skipped right through his arms. Third and nine at the 37. Chuck Shelton in his first year at Utah State. The Aggies have won three and lost seven. They lost last Saturday, 27 to 10, to Utah. Ponich overthrows the intended receiver, Timo Tagaloa, coming out of the backfield. John O'Leary right with Tagaloa. Good pressure put on that time by number 87, Greg Ramsey, 67, Jethro Franklin. Fourth and nine at the 37. Rod Webster awaiting the punt now. Not Baker, but Webster. Mandel averaged 43 yards a punt coming in and is just about that in the game. Trying to hit the corner. They will mark it and they will say that the ball went out of bounds at the 18. So Kevin Sweeney, the new NCAA record holder in career yards passing, will be a quarterback for Fresno State. In case you're just joining us on the telecast, Kevin got it in the final minute of the first half. And as he brings that team up to the line of scrimmage, he has 10,582 career yards. Williams gets a yard or so the two inside linebackers Al Smith and Wade Harmon closing down on James Williams the senior tailback from Brunswick Georgia and what a difference in the way the second half started as opposed to the first half the old game opened with a big bomb by Sweeney this time he a little pitch out there to James Williams Sweeney was determined to get that record in the first half if he could and he did Threw that one away. First, he looked in the direction of Taylor to the left, and then, scrambling hard, tried to spot number 81, Baker, and threw it away. Actually, he did a good thing with that. When Baker was covered well, he looked over to the left, Taylor. Baker's over on the right, scrambling around there, gets a little pressure. Baker can't get loose. Tony Brown's in the area, along with other white shirts, and very wisely throws it out. Absolutely. Didn't want to force it in there with two white shirts around. Third and nine. Sweeney is going to be sacked for the fourth time tonight. Jim Posciello from Trumbull, Connecticut. First team all PCAA a year ago. Having another banner season. And this his last game at Utah State. On fourth down, Barry Belli to punt. Rich. 
Kendall Smith back near midfield. Good snap from Chris Dugan. Belli's punt will be fielded by Kendall Smith at the 46. Retreats to the 50. Retreats a couple of yards more. Fumbles the ball. Fresno State has it. James Rivera comes up with the football for the Bulldogs. Smith was trying to retreat and retreat and get some running room and pick up some blocking help, but he forgot the ball. There you see all the pressure on him, number 94 there, putting the, a lot of red shirts in the area. Finally loses it, and James Rivera comes up. Dugan's in the area also for the Bulldogs. First down for Fresno State. The ball at the 44 of Utah State. 7-0, the Bulldogs lead. The score came late in the first half on a seven-yard pass from Sweeney to Ron Jenkins. Sweeney will be sacked again, and again it's Jim Pasciello. The 22-year-old Italian dumping Sweeney again. Pasciello evidently has found something uh, astray there in the center of that line for the Bulldogs because he's broken through there cleanly on the last two times. of six. Paul Plug is the tight end on the right side. Baker, wide right. No receiver to the left. Two tight ends. Dugan is over on the left side. Give is to Mosley. Tries to squirt through for a couple of yards. Wade Harmon made the tackle. They will put the ball down at the 44. Third down now and 15. Jim Sweeney twi trying to win his 70th game in nine years at Fresno State. He also had five years at Montana State. Sweeney was the head coach at Washington State for some nine years. He had two years as an assistant coach in the NFL. First with the Oakland Raiders, then with the St. Louis Cardinals. We'll get a timeout here with 10-12 left in the third quarter. It's still only 7-0 Fresno State. Now that I'm 60, I'm going to relax and enjoy my prime. Like the extra interest I'm earning on my Prime Plus CD at Valley Federal Savings. Yes, sir, an extra half percent interest just for savers 60 and older. And Valley Federal's the only place that pays the Prime Plus bonus on top of their normal high rate. Meantime, I've got personal business to attend to, and I'm chairman of the board. The Prime Plus CD and the Prime Plus bonus, only at Valley Federal Savings. Who's gonna be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Give me the news, I can take it. You won, Lou. You won. You won? Hey, they won! The bullets for us to win? Everything. Tell me everything. There's no contest. No contest. I love it. Well, what was the score? Wasn't even close. Whoa, Franny, a blowout. Oh, you guys are great. The score. Come on, come on. No contest, Luke. The other team never showed up. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. If the Bulldogs win tonight, they will finish the 1986 season with a 9 and 2 mark. Last year Fresno State was 11 0 and 1, the only Division 1A unbeaten team in college football. The one blemish was a 24-24 tie with Hawaii. Baker coming in motion. Give right back over to Baker on the reverse. And Baker picks up absolutely nothing. Just got back to the line of scrimmage, the 48. So the reverses for Fresno State have not worked tonight. The Aggies have been alert to that. Brian Hunsaker, Wayne Hardman, and Andre Davis, all three brought Baker down. Didn't fool anyone on that one, but as Sweeney handed the ball off, he then took a shot at big Jerry Halsey, a 6'9", 295-pounder, trying to block for Baker on that one, but all for naught. Barry Belli to punt. Kendall Smith standing back in his 10. Slices it off the side of his foot. Fair catch is signal four by Kendall Smith at the 14. And it's becoming very foggy and damp in the Fresno area right now. The temperature has dropped down to 52 degrees. At kickoff time, it was 58 degrees. 33-yard punt by Barry Belli. 7-0, Fresno State. 
Nine and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Mike Walden and Don Perkins with you from Bulldog Stadium. Smith by Michael Stewart. The strong safety of Fresno State. What a collision. I tell you what, he's been up on the line of scrimmage all evening, blitzing on several occasions, putting pressure on the quarterback. This time he doesn't put pressure on anyone. He wipes out Demetrius Brown right there. A great play by the strong safety, Michael Stewart there in the backfield of the Aggies. The last game in a Fresno State uniform for Michael Stewart from Bakersfield. Quite a baseball player, one time drafted by the Minnesota Twins, later the Milwaukee Brewers. Full house, out of that shotgun. Ponich is going to go long and deep and overthrows his receiver. He was trying to hit Kendall Smith, but Smith had a two-man convoy down there, Rod Webster and Greg Williamson. Nowhere to go on that one, but Tom Ponich had to do the only thing he could because he was under siege there in his own backfield. There will be no bowl game for Fresno State this year. San Jose State will represent the PCAA in the California Bowl against the Mid-America Conference winner, Miami of Ohio. That will be on December the 13th here in Fresno. Great Senate is now a tackle for Utah State. Here's Demetrius Brown, who is brought down by John O'Leary. O'Leary hit him high. Stewart got him low. Let's take a look at it again from the ground level. A good run by Brown on this one there as he squirts through the line of scrimmage. Going to be awful close to that first down, number 80 there, is O'Leary in on the stop. You notice who had a good block, too? Navy Tuiasa Sopo. Tuiasa Sopo. The cousin of Manu, who played in the NFL for a number of years, Seattle and the 49ers. Line drive kick. Baker has got it at the 32. Trying to go wide to the outside. Baker gets away from one, and down he goes at the 31. James Jackson tackled Stephen Baker. And those line dive, uh, drive kicks, Mike, are the kind that can really get you in trouble because they get down there before your kicking team can get down in coverage. Let's take a look at Baker on this one. He's trying to get wide, trying to get behind that wall, which cannot get set up. Comes back inside with too many white shirts in that area. We've had only one score in this game, a seven-yard touchdown pass. Near the end of the first half, Kevin Sweeney to Ron Jenkins. Belli packed on the extra point. Seven to nothing Bulldogs with eight minutes left in the third quarter. <laughs> Al Smith made the tackle on Anthony Mosley. Well, with all the problems they had getting started on that one, Mike, I think uh, you or I could have made the tackle on this one. Let's take a look at the Bulldogs there, all running into each other there in the backfield. Number 29 there, James Williams, watching a little bit of the action while Mosley gets eaten alive. Al Smith making the stop. Ball is at the 25. Split backs. Mosley and Williams. Here comes James Williams. Stopped at the 31. for Kevin Sweeney. And a fine run by Kelly Brooks. Al Smith brought him down. Well, we mentioned there's not going to be a bowl game for the Bulldogs this season, but Jim Sweeney has, still has to coach again because he's been selected to be the head coach in the 12th annual Japan Bowl. The game is January 11th in Yokohama, Japan, so congratulations to Jim Sweeney, head coach in that game. You know who his quarterback will be? I think he'll probably take number nine with him. Oh, you better believe it. Belli. Kendall Smith at the 20. Gets up to the 26. 
And Chris Dugan was downfield. He made the snap to the center. Dugan was down there to make the tackle along with Brian Greer. Kendall Smith's been having a tough time on punt returns all evening. And uh, just uh, on the one before this, he signaled for the first fair catch all evening. This time he tried to run in the back again, all for naught. We'll be right back. Today's game is brought to you in part by Chevron, makers of the best unleaded gasoline at cleaning the entire intake system. The way cars are changing, you never know what's coming next. That's why you want Chevron with Tecro. The best gas means at controlling deposits while cleaning not just fuel injectors, complete intakes. Chevron unleaded gasoline with the high-tech Tecrolene additive. The best for whatever car you happen to drive. Is one gasoline really the best? <laughs> Burger King knows how hard you work for your money. So right now, we'll give you one-third more fries free when you order a medium drink, large fries, and a juicy flame-broiled Whopper, all for a special low price. Hurry into Burger King to get one-third more fries free with a Whopper deal of a meal, now at a special price. This is what Burger King counts. After all, labor should have its reward. <laughs> we know how burgers are made. We have less than six minutes to play in the third quarter. Seven to nothing, Fresno State. Pat Newman to the left side. Kendall Smith to the right. Now Smith goes in motion. Ponich is looking for him. Goes instead to Pat Newman, who makes the grab at the 41. Pat Newman, a freshman from Lincoln High School in San Diego. Good protection for the quarterback, Tom Ponich, by the offensive left tackle, Brian Sitikus. He's from Bakersfield. They'll spot the ball at the 40. First down for the Aggies from Logan, Utah. Gets away from one. Smith can't hold on to the hot potato. Smith must have run about five yards juggling that ball. He's the leading receiver for the Aggies this year. Catching 23 for 437 yards. Look at Tony there stepping out of a leg tackle there. Gets it right on. Whoops, I can't get it the first time or the second time. And to the turf it goes. John Turner almost had a sack of the Utah State quarterback. But Pony is too elusive. From the spread formation, Utah State, second and 10 from the 40. Pony complete this one to Tagaloa. And Tagaloa is pulled down by Cliff Hanneman. Timo Tagaloa from Auckland, New Zealand. Take a look at Tagaloa coming out of that full house backfield there. He's the back on the right, just doing a little circle move around the end. Drive the linebacker back and do a button hook number there to the inside. And picks up the first down yardage. The ball is at the 46 of Fresno State. 7 to nothing, Bulldogs. Aggies having a little confusion how to line up. goes down and a penalty marker is also dropped. Jethro Franklin will be credited with the sack with help from Craig Attade. Face mask against Fresno State. Well, I didn't see it, Mike, but actually there was good pass protection that time for Ponich. He took quite a bit of time dropping back there, finally stepped up and was sacked, but on that kind of a play, you've got to get rid of the ball somewhere. the referee yeah turn on your mic incidental face mask on the defense still first down so that'll move the ball to the 41 of Fresno State 
The Aggies have had a tough time moving the football, generating any offense. Brown and Tagaloa are the running backs. He really rifled that one, but it was closer actually to Michael Stewart rather than his wide receiver, Troy Turner. Yeah, we just have to guess that Troy Turner was the intended receiver. Ponich under siege that time, did the wise thing, rifled it away. We've talked so much about Kevin Sweeney and his stats, and in case you're just joining us on the telecast, Sweeney dead, get the NCAA record in the last minute of the first half. But Tom Ponich, his counterpart, is four out of 18 for 74 yards. This is Demetrius Brown, and he is upended there by Williamson. First down, Utah State, the ball at the 30 of Fresno State. Nice run that time by Demetrius Brown. He's come through on a number of occasions, but uh, that was another great one. 38 left in the third quarter. The Bulldogs leading the Aggies. Monday. What happened? A heart attack victim mysteriously disappears. All but a member of something called the Masada team. The secret Israeli unit that locates and captures war criminals. I don't know if I'm ready for not. And Magnum's in the middle of World War II's darkest secret. Nazi prison camp. Name. Deadly Adversaries on Magnum, Monday night at 7 on TV 26. Jethro Franklin on the hit against Demetrius Brown and a penalty marker against Utah State. Holding against the Aggies, who have enough trouble moving the ball through the air on the ground. They've hurt themselves a great deal with penalties here all evening. Don Perkins, I expected that once the record went by the board, that both teams holding would settle down. On the offense, still first down. And we would see more scoring. But here we are, four and a half minutes away from the end of the third quarter, and it's still 7 to nothing. I think the Bulldogs have attempted to run the football. They just can't get the running game on track. Hanslick and Tagaloa, the running backs for Utah State. Smith is wide left. And that pass is dropped. Fred Wilburn on Rich Rollins. Take a look at Ponich on this one. He rifles it there out to the right. He's going for Rollins, number 81 right there. There's Wilburn, who's a little bit beaten on it. He's behind, but the pass just bounces off the fingertips. And Second and 20. Ponich is saying, what do I have to do to have a completion? Troy Turner just came back into the lineup for the Aggies. Ponich shows a good, strong arm to me. He deserves a better fate. 7-0 Fresno State. Off the hand flick. Oh, a collision there at the 34. John O'Leary and Byron Nichols. A tough hit on Sutton Hanslick, the junior from Sacramento. Okay, let's take a look there at the right of your screen. You're going to see number 87 coming in there, Greg Ramsey, who really put a lick on Ponich there before he got it off to Hanslick. Then Hanslick took quite a lick to himself out there as the receiver. Third and 14 for Utah State. The ball is at the Fresno State 34. Play action fake, and here is Ponich throwing on the run. Almost intercepted by Byron Nichols. Ponich was going to Kendall Smith. Nichols came within an eyelash of having an interception. Mike, we've got a flag out there on the field, and I know what it was. David Grayson really laid the wood to Ponich there after he threw that pass, and the official was right on top of it and threw the flag. That's Byron Nichols there we're looking at, being congratulated by Michael Stewart. Utah State started out the season losing 52 to nothing at BYU lost to Utah last week 27 to 10 trailing here 7 to nothing and there you saw Ponich going in the area there getting that one off right there making the dive is Byron Nichols number three 
to see the zebras there having a little conference but i'm sure the walk off is going to be against the bulldogs and there they go Roping the passer on the defense first down Now that's a polite way of saying this quarterback's having enough problems all evening. Don't make his night even longer. Head coach Jim Sweeney there looking on. So the ball's inside the 20 now. It's down to the Fresno State 19. Newman and Kendall Smith to the left. They will run out of the eye. The tailback number 20, Demetrius Brown. First and 10 at the Bulldog 19. Sutton Hanslick. A yard at the most and another penalty marker. Jethro Franklin, Jay Wilkerson made the tackle. And according to Brent Snitticus, an offensive lineman, the penalties against Fresno State, and Snitticus is absolutely right. Now well, here you see the conference there with Tui Sokolo, number 73, and the walk-off there against the Bulldogs again. Defense. Offside, still first down. Take a look at it again. You would think by the last game of the season, everybody would be able to go with the snap of the ball, but there's been a lot of offsides, and maybe it's the cadence that's being used out there. Three minutes left in the third quarter. Pony. And making the catch is Rollins, but he caught it out of bounds. Rollins right in front of Fred Wilburn. But the back judge, Rich Colon, was right over there and quickly signaled that he caught it out of bounds. Take a look at it from the end zone. Punishes pass to Rollins there. Oh, yeah. Now he's got both feet out. Working against Wilburn. Wilburn's in good position. Actually, not enough room to make a completion out there in that corner of the end zone. Ball is at the 14 of Fresno State. Second and five. Tagaloa. Timo Tagaloa stopped right around the 13. John O'Leary leading the surge. David Grayson getting up off the bottom of the pile as well. They will spot it at the 12. Tagaloa there in the backfield, as Mike Walden mentioned earlier. He doesn't have a whole lot of football experience. He's just a sophomore. He'll get better two more years to go for the Aggies. Third and three at the 12. The big excitement at the start of the game, Kevin Sweeney's pursuit of Flutie's record. Kevin got it with one minute to go in the first half. Now, Utah State has a chance to tie, but Rollins can't hold on. The pass high, but Rich Rollins, the junior from Anaheim, California, couldn't come up with that completion. Fred Wilburn on pass defense. Yeah, actually, he was in good position, too. That's one of the reasons Rollins could not come up with that one. It was a well-thrown pass by Ponich, just good defense by Wilburn. So now it'll be fourth and three. And we will get a field goal attempt by Dean Garner. This should be a chip shot for the left footer. Garner, who was born in Yorkshire, England, had one of 59 yards against New Mexico State this year. It's blocked. Brian Nichols made the block. Nichols, the cornerback from San Diego, playing in his last game, blocks that field goal attempt by Dean Garner. I tell you what, some of these seniors are going to have some fine memories to carry with them for a long time, and Byron Nichols is one of them after that blocked kick. Now, Kevin Sweeney already has one NCAA record. He can tie another one. He has 175 yards passing. He needs just 25 more to go over 200 for the 30th time in his career. That'll help boost his total as Williams is bumped out of bounds. Al Smith, Darren Long doing the honors. Andre Davis missed the tackle, but the other two are able to get him down. However, 
Williams got loose for a 17-yard gain, and that puts Kevin Sweeney at 192 yards. Nine more, and he goes over 200 yards for the 30th time in his four-year career at Fresno State. Less than two minutes to play in the third quarter. Williams runs into Pondre Davis. Pondre bumps him out of bounds. Kind of missed Kelly Skipper not being in the lineup as we look at James Williams there taking a breather on the sideline. Kind of a contrast in running styles with Williams running with a lot of power. And number 26, Kelly Skipper, who is not in the lineup being a darter, dancer, moving around with great quickness. Second down and six with the ball at the 46. Gene Taylor wide to the right side. Kelly Brooks, Dean Collins in the backfield. This is Collins. Collins is a junior from Dos Palos, up around the San Jose area. James Jackson made the tackle. That much time left in this third quarter. We talked about the two running backs who have been doing it all year for the Bulldogs, but the two that are in there right now, number 32, Brooks, is only a freshman. Dean Collins is just a junior. They'll both be back next year. Third and five at the 47. Sweeney to Williams. First down, Fresno State. Williams out of bounds at the 42 of Utah State. Jackson and Long got him out of bounds, and that gives Kevin Sweeney 202 yards, the 30th time he has gone over 200 yards in his career. And that ties the NCAA record held now by three men, Kevin Sweeney, Doug Flutie, and Brian McClure. Brian McClure of Bowling Green. 30, 200 plus passing games in a career. Goes to the 41. Al Smith on the tackle. Smith has made a lot of tackles tonight. He came in averaging 15 tackles a game. Al Smith from Los Angeles, a senior, had 25 tackles in that losing effort to the University of Utah a week ago. He came into this contest with 148 tackles for the year. Last year, he had 138 and broke the record by his brother, Aaron Brooks. Taylor wide right. can find somebody and he slides down at the 44 he was not sacked went down when he realized he was going to have to eat the ball so the clock ticking away the final seconds of the third period and we've had only one touchdown scored here tonight a seven yard pitch from Sweeney to Ron Jenkins and they'll just let the clock apparently run down and that'll be it for the third quarter from Bulldog Stadium in Fresno. The Bulldogs, 7 to nothing over Utah State.
In this confusing maze of car buying, there's really only one dealership, Century Ford. Century Ford, your regional Ford dealer, is the number one Ford dealer in the Valley. A five-star dealership with the Valley's largest selection of new cars and trucks. And during our incredible Deal of the Century sales event, you'll see the car you want at the hottest price of this century. The payments are right, and we're open till 10 tonight. Get a Ford car, truck, or van, day or night, during Century Ford's Deal of the Century sales event. Hurry and be there early. Kevin Sweeney has 10,609 career yards. He has one NCAA record in his pocket tonight. He has tied another. After three quarters, total yards 236 to 154. Only 53 yards passing for Utah State. Here's the first play of the fourth quarter. Mike Walden and Don Perkins with you from Bulldog Stadium in Fresno. Sweeney's going to go long and deep for Stephen Baker. Can't hold on. Andre Davis might have been able to tip that ball away. Darren Long was in back of Stephen Baker. Well, early in the year, those are the kind of connections that went often. There's Stephen Baker going up for the home run. Andre Davis, Darren Long, both in the area. Good coverage there in the zone protection. They're both converging on him. The official attendance was just brought up by Scott Johnson, the SID at Fresno State. 34,381, which is 4,381 over capacity. Kendall Smith takes Belli's punt. Out of bounds at the 16. James Rivera running him out of bounds. 33-yard punt, a four-yard return by Smith. Smith, a fine athlete, a fine return man, but I, I think his best return this evening has been about two or three yards. Good coverage by the special teams for Fresno State. When you realize that Fresno State was averaging about 29 points a game and Utah State approximately 13 points a game, you certainly expected more than a 7 to nothing score early in the fourth quarter. Well, they've been wearing out the middle of this field, though. Handing off to Demetrius Brown. Brown gets a couple up to the 18. Chris Reinhardt on the tackle. And in all of the elation and excitement and hype about Sweeney's pursuit of Doug Flutie, let's give a lot of credit to our stats man, Mitch Reinhardt, and our graphics operator, Jerry Cole. They were right on the money, keeping you abreast. Sweeney finally went over the mark and got the NCAA record. Congratulations, gentlemen. Nice job. Good. Ponich lost his footing, and then Reinhardt was right on top of him. Seen that happen a number of times this evening to, uh, to several different players, and that time Ponich did go down. Reinhardt there just to make sure he doesn't go anyplace. The field actually is in good condition. They haven't had any rain here in Fresno for a while. Here's a look at it again. Well, you may want to talk to Tom Ponich about how good the shape the field's in. Well, they do play soccer. In fact, there's a big NCAA semifinal soccer match between Fresno State and UCLA here on this field tomorrow afternoon. Ponich from the shotgun. No good to Smith, and Smith lost his footing as he tried to button hook around. How can the hell can we let that go? <laughs> Not a well-thrown pass that time either by Tom Ponich, but uh, he had a lot of pressure on him, had to kind of look between red shirts there to throw it out in an open area. Somebody was on the officials. <laughs> I could pick that up on the headset quite clearly. <laughs> going to rule that he just did get over the goal line. So it is not a safety. James Rivera. Mandel couldn't handle the snap, and then Rivera was all over Mandel. He did quite a job in the Hawaii game, stripping the player. There's the mishandled punt, and there's Rivera right there, putting him on his back in the end zone before he tosses it up to John Moore. So now the ball is just barely across the goal line. Hey, Mike, we could score from there. We could get that in. We can get, you know, 
nine other guys, you and me go down there and punch it in. I know that you could, Don Perkins, when you were at the University of New Mexico and later with the Dallas Cowboys. But you may have to speak for yourself. 13-14 <laughs> left in this one. The Bulldogs still on top, 7-0. Looking out for number one, looking out for number one. Toyota, looking out for you with a Toyota one ton. With over a ton of payload, it's strong enough to outcarry any mid-sized truck and can tow up to two and a half tons. Looking out for number one. Looking out for you has made Toyota number one in compact truck sales and truck satisfaction. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota. You know, it kind of makes you wonder. I mean, why does Coors develop their own special barley? Have their own fleet of refrigerated trucks? They even designed and built their own malt house. Well, there's a saying. When you want it done right, do it yourself. This <laughs> is right. mentioned that the official attendance tonight was 34,381. The Bulldogs have had eight home games. And they're averaging 33,573. Would it be a quarterback sneak? We'll see. Sweeney throws it away. Mark Moraz had the pressure on the quarterback. Sweeney was actually trying to throw to Paul Flug, but he threw it way over Flug's head and beyond the end line. Take a look at it again there. Just a little fake there into the line of scrimmage. Now he's trying to direct traffic downfield. Flug is down there, but he's out of the end zone all the way. Two tight ends, Chris Dugan and Paul Flug. The give is to Anthony Mosley, but they call the play off. Penalty markers all over. A lot of movement down there. I saw some of the Aggies jumping around before the snap of the ball, and it looked like that jumping around never stopped. Procedure against Fresno State. Chuck Shelton, the coach at Utah State said coming in, I think this is going to be the Sweeney Bowl. Well, Sweeney has already won the bowl. <laughs> Look at all the red shirts there kind of bunching up. Good ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Still second down. So now the ball goes back to the six. The game really has been secondary. Or maybe even third or fourth <laughs> down the line. Because the game hasn't been that much. Just a seven-yard scoring pass from Sweeney to Ron Jenkins. Baker, Brock Smith, Gene Taylor. The receivers to the right side. From the six, Sweeney in the end zone. Taylor, but he caught it out of bounds. Tony Brown was covering on the play, and Taylor made a nice reception, but he was out of bounds. Sweeney there got dumped in the backfield. Nice catch, as you mentioned, Mike, by Taylor, but he was out of bounds. So we started Oops. off. Another penalty, yep, I roughing the, the passer, roughing Sweeney. That'll be half the distance, so the ball will go from the six down to the three. We'll play the down over. Okay, we go from the one to the six to the three, and uh, we might get this in there yet. Yeah. Roughing the passer, on the defense, automatic first down. So, 7 to nothing, Fresno State, 13 minutes left. Full house backfield, Ron Sims, Anthony Mosley, James Williams. It's Williams. Williams is going to be stopped at the three. Darren Long and Mike Moraz on the tackle for Utah State. Defensively, Moraz, Halsey, Posiello and Pondre Davis have been outstanding for Utah State. Here's a look at it again from the ground level. 
lot of white shirts there. Not much blocking on the part of that offensive line for the Bulldogs. Second and three. Ball wasn't even snapped. <laughs> Could have been that Utah State was drawn off. We'll see. Everybody moved with the ball. You have to give credit to the Utah State defense. The Aggies have been tough on defense, ranking number three in the PCAA conference. There you go. We see movement there on the right side. And it's, of course, okay for the Aggies to charge through. Once we get that movement, Brian Kazarian was the guy that was moving for the Bulldogs. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Still second down. It's getting downright cold here. 51 degrees. Cold by California standards. Not to the people back east, I'm sure. I think the Bulldogs are trying to run out the clock here in the fourth quarter right now. Well, they've got a long run because we've got 12 and a half minutes left. James Williams got down there close, but he didn't get in. Brian Hunsaker, the nose guard, pulled him down. Nice run this time by James Williams. Let's take a look at it again. There he burst through there, running through would-be arm tackles. Now the Bulldogs are right back where they started with first and goal at the one-yard line. No, it's not first. It'll be third down. Third and goal. Seven to nothing, Fresno State. Touchdown, James Williams. A fitting climax to a senior campaign, last game for Williams. Getting it in from a yard out. There he is, senior James Williams, who ran for over 1,000 yards last year, came into this game with 820, 821 yards. Picked up some additional yardage tonight, but not a great deal. Williams has been over 100 yards rushing 11 times in a 23-game career. So almost every other game has been 100 yards plus for this young man and his two years at Fresno State. Tonight, Williams has 41 yards and 11 attempts. Belli kicks it through, and it's 14 to nothing. Fresno State, 11 minutes, 46 seconds to go. Sunday. Said not to worry about catching them. They'd probably kill each other before they go five miles. Chained together, running for their lives. Get off my back, I am married to you. You married to me, all right, Joker. And here's the ring. Tony Curtis, Sidney Poitier. You hang on to me, Joker, best way you can. We're getting out of here. The Defiant Ones. Sunday at 2 on 26 KMPH. Burger King knows how hard you work for your money. So right now, we'll give you one-third more fries free when you order a medium drink, large fries, and a juicy flame-broiled Whopper, all for a special low price. Hurry into Burger King to get one-third more fries free with a Whopper deal of a meal, now at a special price. This is a Burger King town. After all, labor should have its reward. We know how burgers should be. The way this game is going, it may be as long as the Redskins and the 49ers Monday night. <laughs> Where do they go? Three hours and 49 minutes? Talk about marathon football. Mm. I don't think they had a game in the NFL last weekend that was under three hours. Kendall Smith at the six. To the 20. And Smith is put down right around the 30. Of course, we've had a lot of passes in the game and 12 penalties already, so that does slow things down. Just looking at Kendall Smith there, he's a, quite a receiver, also a great punt return man, also running back kickoff. He's only a sophomore, and if he plays many more games like tonight, he ain't gonna make it to a senior, I'm afraid. Mike Wise, Daryl Howerton, handling our player identification in the TV booth, and we pass along our thanks to them for the assistance. 14 to nothing, Fresno State. From the spread, Navy Tui Asasopo will make the snap. Barely. Ponich pass batted in the air. I believe it was Jay Wilkerson that got his hand in the way and punched it up in the air. Wilkerson is a linebacker. 
Maybe we can pick it up again. And Ponich is not the biggest of quarterbacks. He only stands about six feet tall, and he has to look around there to get it over. There's number 35, Wilkerson, batting it in the air. Number 69 trying to get it is Brian Greer. He can't get to it. Incomplete pass. Tagaloa was going for it. It looked like he might even pick it up before it hit the ground, but he did not. Newman wide to the right side. Again from the shotgun. Ponies going for Smith. He's open. Has it. Kendall Smith. Out of bounds at the 37 of Fresno State. And Tom Ponich was right on the money with that shot to Smith. Good shot by Kendall Smith. He's the big weapon there for the Aggies. Greg Williamson's the defensive back for the Bulldogs. Let's take a look at it. The pass protection's good. The pass is good. Williamson's a little bit off target. And it's a completion for the Aggies. The Aggies here in the second half have been able to move the ball pretty well, but they haven't been able to score. is down and so is Ponich. Ponich was hit by John Corippo. And you have to take your hat off to this guy. Believe it or not, folks, Corippo is a nose guard at 5 feet 7, 175 pounds. Let's take a look at the big lick that the 5'7 guy puts on number 7, Ponich, there. Nice tackle there, bringing him down. There is a flag on the field, however. Let's go to the sidelines and Vic Jacobs. You mentioned John Carippo, the middle guard, 165 pounds. If he gets another sack, watch him to do a cartwheel or some sort of acrobatic move. He's famous for those last year, as you well know, Mike and Don. Back to you guys in the booth. I do recall that. It seems to me it was against Oregon State or UNLV, one of the early games last season. And after he made a sack, he did a cartwheel and a very good one. Fresno State defense has had five sacks of Tom Ponich tonight. Maybe this will be six. Ponich does get rid of it. And a penalty marker is dropped. He was going for Smith, and the ball was batted away by Rod Webster. And Ponich took a lick after he delivered the ball. Yeah, he was running out of necessity on this when you're going to see him rolling out there to his right. The roll was after the fact because Jethro Franklin was on the other side. Number 57, Greg Atai is also there. And right there you see Kendall Smith, the intended receiver, and Rod Webster doing battle on the sidelines. Here is the walk-off against Fresno State. And Larry Rice will tell us all about it. Pass interference, on the defense, first down. It would have to be against Rod Webster. I assume, I didn't see it, but uh, I didn't call it either, so. We've had 16 penalties in this game. 10 against Fresno State. Ball is at the 33 of the Bulldogs. 14 to nothing, Fresno on top. 11 minutes left. Excuse me. Inside handoff, Demetrius Brown. Goes to the 27. Brown tackled by Brian Greer. Take a look at it again. The full house backfield. Kind of a shotgun set there. The handoff to Demetrius, who's had a good night of running. Running through some would-be arm tackles before he's finally brought down. And a good block by Todd Storm, a 270-pound sophomore, freeing Brown. Brown's a little shaky. Been tough yardage tonight for Demetrius Brown. Utah State has averaged only 190 yards per game in offense. That contributes to the Aggies' 3-7 and seven record. Remember, the Aggies, and this is their 11th game of the season, they have scored only five times in the second half. All season long. Chuck Shelton in his first year there. He's got big people offensively and defensively in the line. Needs some help, though, in the skilled position. Second and five. Ponich. Intercepted, but out of bounds by...
by Rod Webster. Webster made a leaping grab, and Webster and Michael Stewart lead Fresno State in interceptions with four apiece this season. Let's uh, take a look there at Ponich's toss there down the sidelines. Right there is Fred Wilburn in the area. Also, Michael uh, Rod Webster comes down with it, but out. And Ponich was throwing to Rich Rollins. sum up what has gone on so far Kevin Sweeney has one NCAA record formerly held by Doug Flutie has tied another held with Flutie and Brian McClure Ponich throwing complete to Scott Brown at the 15 and Brown from Diamond Bar California is wrapped up by Greg Williamson Good rifle pass. You mentioned earlier, though, that Ponish can really put some zip on it. Let's take a look at it there. And he just rifles it. There it is, a shot out there to Scott Brown. Greg Williamson making the stop. Byron Nichols in there for an assist. The stats on the Utah State quarterback are 7 out of 27, 97 yards. Ten minutes left in the game. Lone running back is Tagaloa. Timo Tagaloa. Crossed him up, and Tagaloa goes to the eight. Tackled by David Grayson. Nice run by Tagaloa. He's going to be quite a running back for Chuck Shelton when he understands this game completely. I mention that because he doesn't have much football experience. He's from Auckland, New Zealand, and has played very little football, but done a good job, just a sophomore, for the Aggies. Troy Turner in for Utah State, replacing Kendall Smith. The Aggies with the ball at the Fresno State 8. It's second down three. Ponich. Newman couldn't hold on. Newman and Byron Nichols battling in the end zone. Take a look at this pass again. It's one of those that uh, Ponish just wants to loft in the air, hoping that Newman can get over to it there. It's close to the sideline. Byron Nichols was in good position for anything less than that pass, anything shorter of that, and Nichols could have gotten it. Fresno State with 14 points on a seven-yard touchdown pass. We need to Ron Jenkins and a one-yard plunge by James Williams. Two extra points by Barry Bella. This is the most serious threat of the night for Utah State. Third and three. Ponich knocked away by Wilburn, and a penalty marker is dropped. Wilburn all over Kendall Smith. Actually, the ball hit Wilburn in the back. Here it is. It's a timing pass from Ponich out there to Kendall Smith. He just throws it out in the area, hoping that Smith can get to it. Fred Wilburn, though, is in good position for it. Had Wilburn turned around, he might have had an interception. He would have had it. Two yards. Defensive pass interference in the end zone. First down on the two-yard line. The decision greeted with the boos from this partisan Fresno State crowd. 14 to nothing, Bulldogs, nine minutes left. Demetrius Brown, who was shaken up back in the game now for Utah State, as the Aggies will have a first and goal at the two. Two tight ends, Petey Maiden and Tom James. Tagaloa, Demetrius Brown, the running back. It's Demetrius Brown, stopped at the one. Greg Williamson with a sure tackle at the one-yard line. I love to see those cornerbacks and safeties make tackles there at the line of scrimmage. This time, Greg Williamson, the cornerback, stopping Demetrius Brown on what looked like almost a sure touchdown there, but Williamson doing a good job in the backfield there before Brown could really get on track. Kendall Smith is back in, bringing a play from the bench. Newman will go to the left, Smith to the right, lone running back, Timo Tagaloa. Ponich, penalty markers down. The pass is caught by Kendall Smith, but he's caught it out of bounds. 
Aaron Nichols there on the coverage on that one. It was a nice catch that time by Smith, but he was up in the air, came down out of bounds. Have a flag on the play, though, anyway. Let's take a look at it again. Quarterback Ponish there looking to his right. Once again, he lost it in the air, wanting the back to just be able to run underneath it. There it is. A nice grab by Smith, but you can see nothing hits inside the chalk mark. The Utah State running game is almost non-existent. You would think they could run it in from here, but they've elected to go through the air. They don't have a back on the Aggie ball club that's averaged as much as three yards per carry, and uh, that's like having no running attack at all. And they've been averaging only 67 yards rushing per game. 67. Illegal participation. 12 men on the field. Still second down. No wonder they weren't able to complete that pass. The Bulldogs had 12 men on the field. Fresno State has allowed only three rushing touchdowns this year, and they don't allow one on that play. Mike Walker leading the defensive surge. Craig Gattade in there also. Where did this drive start again? First and goal at the two, I believe. After the... Uh, Interference ruling in the end zone. Well, let's take a look at it again. Quarterback sneak there by Ponish. He didn't sneak for much, though. A lot of red shirts there. Bunching up in the middle of the line for the Bulldogs. Wide receiver Troy Turner comes out for the Aggies, replaced by Pat Newman. Utah State will go with two tight ends, but now the Aggies will call a timeout. Seven and a half minutes left in this one from Bulldog Stadium. Fresno State, 14 to nothing over Utah State. Today's game is brought to you in part by Pepsi-Cola San Joaquin Bottling Company. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Does somebody have any change? of a new generation. An institution with the dimension and stability of SUMA Health Plan is built on one foundation, understanding the needs of those we serve. SUMA Health Plan is a Valley original, born in the Valley to provide the best health care possible with no financial worry. 13 Valley hospitals, more than 400 Valley doctors. SUMA Health Plan protects individuals and businesses in Fresno, Madera, and Kings Counties. Suma, all the care you'll ever need. The crowd here at Bulldog Stadium trying to cheer on the Fresno State defense. It's third down and a yard to go at the one-yard line. And now the Bulldog defense urging the crowd to make even more noise. Tagaloa, Tanslick, the running back. Quarterback sneak, Ponich didn't make it. Did not make it. Craig Gattade will be on the bottom of the pile, the junior from Carmel, California. Now this is going to be some kind of a goal line stand, if indeed the Bulldogs, you see number 80 there, is John O'Leary, but Craig Gattade right in the middle, Anthony Nunn also in there on the top. This is going to be some goal line stand, if in fact the Bulldogs can keep the Aggies from getting in there. fourth and the ball nudging that goal line. Newman is in. Going out is Timo Tagaloa. I still think a quarterback sneak without any ball handling at all just to snap from center is the best. We'll see. Timeout. Six forty-four left. As the Bulldogs Dig in on defense once again. Announcing an exciting new concept in business computing. A computer specifically designed to quickly adapt to the ever-changing demands of your business. One that will effectively meet your current business needs and easily grow to meet those in the future. 
Announcing the Computerland Business Computing System. Powerful, incredibly flexible, and backed by the world's largest computer retailer, Computerland. The Computerland BCS. When your business grows, it won't be left behind. The new Clovis Honda Fresno Yamaha has moved to what is probably the largest motorcycle and Honda product outlet in the valley. One of the many specials at the new Clovis Honda Fresno Yamaha is the Honda EM650 portable generator with a four-stroke engine, exclusive oil alert system, and fuel capacity for up to five hours of continuous operation. Yours right now for only $297. do not miss all the specials at the new Clovis Honda Fresno Yamaha, 727 Clovis Avenue near downtown Clovis. Crowd chatting defense and the defense for Fresno State. Greg Ramsey, Mike Walker, Jethro Franklin, David Grayson, Anthony Nunn, Cliff Hanneman, Tony Harris, Rod Webster. Fourth and goal. Ball inside the one. Tagaloa just didn't make it. Tagaloa scores for Utah State. Tagaloa almost was going to be tackled at the one, was able to slip that tackle. Michael Stewart had him for a brief moment, and Tagaloa with a second effort and a surge carried across the goal line. Right there on the right, you saw Michael Stewart make the hit. Let's take a look at the hand out there, Tagaloa, Stewart. Stewart's outmatched in that one, though. Tagaloa got him weight-wise by a good bit of weight there, and he goes in for the touchdown. The first one for the Aggies. Holding is Darren Long. The kicker is Garner, and he puts it through. The Bulldogs now lead 14-7 with still 6 minutes, 41 seconds to go. Fresno State is not home yet. Who's gonna be at the silver bullet this is tonight? This from the girl with the gray jacket. You told him it was from me. I thought I was doing you a favor. Uh, I want to be <sighs> invisible. Kelly, you're a friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. I can't believe it. Look, I'll buy you guys a couple of Coors Lights. We'll forget it ever happened, okay? But, Rob, just tell me something. What did he say? He said thanks. <laughs> There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Coors Light beer. Toyota dealers want to make this the November to remember for great deals. You're going to remember this first big sales event of the new model year. Lots of 87s in stock. They want a deal on the all-new Camrys, exciting new FX-16s, and Tercels. Don't forget, it's the last year sales tax is deductible. Your last chance to save hundreds more dollars. Make this your November to remember. Uh, who could have for anything more? Be your Toyota dealer now. <laughs> Well, you think you might see an onside kick here by Dean Garner? I don't think so, Mike. We've got six minutes left in this game. We looked at the scoring drive there. 69 yards in 14 plays. I'm expecting that they're going to kick it deep. Brock Smith will be deep, along with Gene Taylor. It'll be Brock Smith at the 13. Smith to the 29, and a penalty marker goes down. Some of the folks starting to head out for an early exit here. 34,381. 4,300 over capacity here at Bulldog Stadium to be here on Kevin Sweeney nights. And Sweeney responded with an NCAA record and tying another. Vic Jacobs, how cold are you down on the sidelines? Oh, there's a bit of a chill factor down here, Mike and Don, but I'll tell you... Coach Chuck Shelton was pleading to the refs right before that kickoff. He said, please give me six minutes and 41 seconds of officiating, please. He's almost on his knees to these guys. You know you're on foreign turf. you got to play those refs. Back to the action, Mike and Don. And they responded, Mike, by throwing the flag, I guess. Uh. Kevin Sweeney is 23 out of 34. It's James Williams up the middle. Sweeney, I think, has thrown only three passes, four passes this half. And Kevin has 203 yards. His best outing since he was hurt against San Jose State on October the 4th. That afternoon, in a losing effort, 45-41, Sweeney passed for 337. 
second down and two. Again on the ground. Good move. Williams. Darting through there and sidestepping very well. Fine move by James Williams, the senior, senior running back from Brunswick, Georgia. Long makes the tackle. Jackson, two. There he goes, reading his block there. Skips out to the right, back to the left. Nice run. A lot of these seniors are playing the last football they'll ever play. Many of them will go on, get a shot at the pros. A lot of them, this will be it. But in the case of the NFL, many are called and few are chosen. 540 left, 14 to 7, Fresno State. Kelly Brooks might have the first down. He had to get across the 30 and looks like he just nosed it across. Baker goes out. Brock Smith back in for Fresno. Backfield, a little swing pass. And down a little bit low for Williams to handle that time. Mark Moraz has rushed the passer extremely well for Utah State. Moraz, Tulsi, Osiello, Andre Davis, and Al Smith have excelled on defense for the Aggies. And they'll be a team to contend with in the future. They've got a lot of young players, and they're big and strong, offensively and defensively in the line. But when you have to play at Nebraska, you better be big and strong. Absolutely. Sweeney completes a pass to himself. And he slides down at the 44. Well, it really is Kevin Sweeney night. <laughs> when you can complete a pass to yourself, and that goes in his long ledger of yards gain throwing. Okay, Kevin, let's show us your magic on this one. There he goes, and it's batted in the air. I couldn't see who hit it, but Posiello. I know who caught it. Pasiello hit it. Okay, Sweeney there. And he slides in safely at second. Mitch Reinhardt hands me a stat. That's his first career reception. <laughs> Maybe well, his last, too. When you're over 10,600 yards, I guess you're entitled to one of those. Kelly Brooks moves up to the 48 of Utah State. A lot of seniors in their last game, as you mentioned, as we wind down to the four-minute mark in this game. Seniors for Utah State. Wade Harmon, Jim Pasiello, James Jackson, the quarterback, Tom Ponich, Scott Brown, Dean Collins. And Collins with a good heart. The transfer after two years at Boise State, Dean Collins from Dos Palos, tackled by Darren Long. And he's not one of the seniors. He's a junior running back. He and Kelly Skipper will be quite a running tandem for Jim Sweeney next year. Look at that second effort there, breaking tackles. Arm tackles won't do it against Dean Collins. First down, Fresno State <laughs> at the 36. 14 to 7, Bulldogs. 3.45 remaining. Dean Collins again. Running over people. Dean Collins almost has a first down. Be very close. Brown and Smith on the tackle. Good blocking by Dugan out on that one, but watch this leg action by Dean Collins there. Also out in front is number 62, Paul Portesi, the big guard, but Collins does a lot of it on his own as he turns it upfield. It'll be second and a yard. Jim Sweeney says, no, that's the way I want you to run with the ball next year. <laughs> of course, the question is, will Jim Sweeney be at Fresno State? A lot of newspaper stories to the effect that uh, Cal may be after Jim Sweeney. Joe Cap wound up his coaching career at Cal today with a victory over Stanford in the big game. Kelly Brooks to the 25. Gary Halsey on the tackle. Talking about the seniors in their last game for Fresno State, Mike Chalansa, Brian Clay, John Campo, Chris Dugan, Troy Fisher, 
Cliff Hanneman, David Grayson, the center, Brad Heyer, Brian Kazarian, an offensive guard, Chris Leonard, Scott Duarte, Anthony Mosley, Myron Nichols, Mark Olson, Paul Flug, Greg Ramsey, Mike Walker, Michael Stewart, Mike Savage, Greg Williamson, James Williams, and Anthony Mosley. Scott Duarte, I guess I've named them all. Had a personal foul. Personal foul on the defense. First down. I've named them all except for the key ones, Kevin Sweeney, Gene Taylor, and Stephen Baker. So this will be a, a big graduation toll for Fresno State. Come on, Stan, get up! 14 to 7, Fresno State, two and a half minutes left. Ball at the 13 of Utah State. Ron Sims, tackled by Gary Halsey. Sims is a junior from Miami, Florida, who transferred into Fresno State from Merced Junior College. One of the many good stable of running backs that Jim Sweeney has on hand. He's real proud of the running back troop that he has. He says he's so deep he can't get them all into the game. You would think a team with a 9-2 and two record, and Fresno will be 9-2 and two if the Bulldogs hold on to this 14-7 lead, would go somewhere. But not in the case of Fresno State. They didn't make it to the Cal Bowl. San Jose State did. And they were shut out. They thought they might get into the Freedom Bowl. But it wasn't to be. Williams slams his way inside the 10. And Utah State would then wind up 3-8. and eight, Which is the same record that the Aggies posted last year under former coach Chris Pella. By the way, happy birthday to James Williams. The tailback of Fresno State is 23 years old today. Some other birthdays for the Bulldogs. Dean Collins will celebrate his 22nd on Monday. Chris Leonard will be 23 on Tuesday. And the man of the hour, Kevin Sweeney, turned 23 last Sunday. So, happy birthday, guys, and it looks like they're all going to be able to have a good one because they're going to finish out this 1986 season on a winning note and establishing that new record that the whole team wanted for Kevin Sweeney. To repeat again, in case you're just joining us, Kevin Sweeney set one record in CAA career yards passing, going past Doug Flutie of Boston College, and has tied another most games career Passing for 200 yards or more, a total of 30. Three men hold it, Kevin Sweeney, Brian McClure, Bowling Green, and Doug Flutie. A minute and 40 seconds left. One timeout left in this game for the Utah State Aggies. The only defeats for the Bulldogs, a loss October the 4th, at San Jose State, 45-41. And the loss last Saturday night in Honolulu to Hawaii, 24-13. Williams gets down close to the five. Wade Harmon flipped him down. Let's take a look at this run again by Williams. Here's a guy that's a senior, had a great career playing in what may be his last, well, certainly his last college football game, and still running with that kind of determination. James Williams, 16 carries for 65 yards. Last year ran for over 1,000 yards, 900 about this year. Clock moving down to the one-minute mark now. Belli will be called upon apparently for a field goal attempt. He's got the tee out there. And he will spot it down somewhere along. They're going to get a delay of the game penalty. That'll take some more time off of the clock. We're down to 47 seconds. So that'll move the ball from the five back to the ten. But Belli his longest field goal ever was 55 yards last year against New Mexico State, a Fresno State record. A couple of years ago, Belli kicked five field goals in the game against this Utah State team. Belli has 
kick field goals in 27 of the 28 games that he has participated. This one is no good. So that mark will go by the boards. And it's still a 14-7 Fresno State lead. And kind of unusual for Barry Belli. He's the leading kicker in the nation in several different categories, in three different categories, as a matter of fact. And already tonight, he's missed two field goals inside the 40-yard line. And if I'm not mistaken, he'd only missed two inside the 40-yard line in his entire career prior to tonight. That is true. You're right on top of it, Don Perkins. Good memory, even in this cool weather. Yeah, it's down to 49 degrees right now. 43 seconds left. Ponich will load it up. Across the middle. Oh, a great grab by Pat Newman, the freshman from San Diego. Down at the 42. That'll stop the clock. 38 seconds left. And it's players like uh, Newman there that Chuck Shelton has to look forward to in the next year. He's going to come out of this season with a 3-8 and eight record, but he's got a lot of young players that he can count on in upcoming years. Bonich has thrown an interception in every game this year, but none yet tonight. Here comes Ramsey after Bonich. Oh! And almost, was it intercepted? It was indeed. Michael Stewart gets it. And if you... If we have that on replay, look at the hit that Ponich takes just as he released the ball. Well, Ramsey it. after him. I couldn't see who unloaded. Mark Olson was also in there in pursuit, but number five, Michael Stewart, is the guy that comes up with the interception. Let's take a look at it again. Going to see Ponich there rolling to his left. Number 87 in pursuit is Greg Ramsey. It's Wilkerson that Wilkerson, made the hit. 35, okay. Well, I just said that he hadn't thrown an interception tonight <laughs> and almost on cue, there it was. He says consistency is everything. Now I've had one in every game. 22 seconds left, and the Bulldogs will run off the clock now and finish 1986 with a 9-2 and two mark. Not what they thought it might be at the start of the year. They had visions of another unbeaten season, a la 1985. But it's not too shabby, and I know a whole lot of teams around the country that would be very happy with a 9-2 and two record. Utah State, on the other hand, will go to 3-8. and eight. And next season, Fresno State will open September the 5th at Washington State in Pullman, then play Western Illinois in Fresno September the 12th, and on September the 19th, battle UCLA in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Meanwhile, Utah State will open at Kentucky and Nebraska in 87. So the 1986 season is over. The Bulldogs win it 14 to 7. It's Kevin Sweeney's night, and he's getting the hero's ride. We'll be back after this. The reason we carry some of the product lines we do are because they're the top of the line. Uh, you take a Hunter ceiling fan line or low-pi stoves, uh, coal or plumbing, they're the, the best. And that's what we want to carry is the best. And so we want to make sure that every customer is taken care of well and that the product that we sell them is a good product. This is the Noid. He loves to ruin your pizza. If you've ever gotten cold pizza, a squashed pizza, or pizza that just wasn't right, the Noid did it. But at Domino's Pizza, we avoid the Noid. So when you want hot, delicious, quality pizza delivered in less than 30 minutes, Domino's Pizza delivers. One call does it all. Introducing the new Apple II GS personal computer, the most powerful Apple II yet. It has a 16-bit microprocessor, 256K of memory, 7 expansion slots, 7 peripheral ports, and that's just for starters. The Apple II GS has two new graphics modes offering over 4,000 different colors. Also, a sound chip that lets you compose and play up to 15 different instruments at one time. Available at Fresno's oldest computer specialty store, Online Computers Plus, Blackstone and Herndon. 15-7, Fresno State over Utah State. A great night for the Sweeney clan and a great night for Fresno State. Right, Jim Sweeney? I know.
was great. I thought Kevin uh, did a, a, an outstanding job. I've seen pitchers, you know, that helped their cause by knocking a couple of runs in, but I've never seen a passer that helped his cause by throwing a pass <laughs> and completing it to himself. Can you imagine us taking seven plays to get the ball in from the one-yard line? <laughs> but I tell you, we, we, we played the game under a lot of strain, and I was very happy for our football team, very happy for Kevin and his mother, everybody else who's ever been affiliated with him, and all his teammates. He's a thoroughbred. I love him dearly, and so does everybody here. Uh, Jim, we want to get a couple of comments from Kevin, but first, as father and head coach, when he finally had that record, what went through your mind? Well, in the beginning of the year, I felt like Kevin was going to break the record and told him to try to play like it had been accomplished. I didn't even know when we broke it. Actually, we broke it when, when he threw the ball to Stephen Baker. Is that right. right? That's right. And I think that was rather poetic justice because they've had two great years here together. I, I felt a great uh, relief when it was done because uh, the strain of having to throw the ball every down to get that thing done, and with Utah State's pass rush like it was, I thought he might get killed. But I was very pleased and happy for him, and I, I don't think there's ever been a more deserving person than Kevin because he's always put his team above himself, and that's all a person can ask about anybody. I think he's one of the great quarterbacks, and I, I'm just proud to, to have been his father and to have been his coach, and also for the other coaches on the staff who have been just equally responsible for the development of the team. Jim, before we hear from Kevin, one question. A 9-2 and two record. Don't you think that that's deserving of some bowl bid? I would think that it, any bowl group that turns his back on a 9-2 and two team for a 6-5 and five team or a 7-4 and four team is really kind of ridiculous. You give our football team a month to heal and we could play against anybody. I would love to see these kids get in a bowl game because I'm sure we could get them ready to play one big bowl game. We still have a lot of tools. The other thing I don't want to have lost in all of this is the fact that I thought our defense played so great tonight, Mike. I'm going to give you Kevin. Wait, 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 before you do, you've got some lipstick on the side of your face there. I have lipstick. That. Those are my daughters. My daughters <laughs> are here from all over the world. There's, they're all over and they're, they're here from New York and from Seattle and from Fresno and all over. Those I'm, gonna, I'm not going to wash my face. If I get lipstick on it, I've earned it. <laughs> He's saying that for Mrs. Sweeney's benefit. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Congratulations, okay. Jim. Thanks and a lot. Thanks for all your help all year. I'm going to give Kevin to you. He's the guy that deserves to talk right. to you. While we make the transfer, we'll pause for this commercial break and then hear from the new record holder, NCAA Career Yards Passing. Telesis. It means progress intelligently planned. This is a story of Telesis. Today, a great building will thrust itself upon the life of our city, the Empire State. In barely a year, stonemasons, carpenters, and riveters have fused iron nerves with a hundred million pounds of steel. Its progress cheered from rooftops, street corners, and tenement windows. Its energy promising that our Great Depression will someday end. <laughs> 